Hello and welcome to Harry Potter and the Rewind Reviews. This week we are back in 1927 and all your favourite characters are back. That's right, there's like wands, there's a Niffler, Hogwarts is back. All your favourite characters are all back. All your favourite characters. Joined, <laughs> they're joined by a lot of new characters and I know what you're thinking. <laughs> will, there be, will there be enough time to focus on any of them? Not really. Nope. So, Will you spend several nah. uh, several scenes in the movie going, wait, is this the guy from that other scene? Because they're all wearing the same coat and hat. Or is this the guy from the other scene? Have I misunderstood this? Maybe this is the guy from that first scene that did the thing. I don't know, maybe it's a different guy. Because I did that a lot. Let's, uh, let's go right in, Dan. It's a bad mm. movie, isn't it? Oh, it's a fucking terrible movie. Uh, we're here doing uh, Fantastic Crimes of Wizard Hitler. And, like... I just think, I think this is one of those examples of like, there might have been a couple of good ideas at the core of this, but it just never came together (laughs) in any way that makes any sort of sense or even entertainment value. It's trying to do too much and it's, it's trying Mm. to go, oh, well we need, we need the beast. We need, we need Jacob. Like how can we? cram all of these things in how can we how Mm. can we achieve this and it's it's just it's too much it's it's dull like i'm sat there going is this holding a child's entertainment i've got a friend he's got a child he's watched it i went did it hold his attention fuck no like the first one lots of beasts lots of fun this one didn't couldn't couldn't pay attention to it and that's yeah, not I mean, surprising. I barely paid attention to it. Well, let's hit that because we're going to, I mean, this is going to be another one of those jumping around the plot ones because I, it's neat when we can go through it start to finish because it's clearer for the audience listening to this podcast what we're talking about. But on that point, I think the ending is the biggest, the biggest problem with that. Like this idea of like, it's just boring because the movie carry, cracks on and it's like lots of hints and teases of things that are coming and characters saying things that are mysterious or really overt foreshadowing that you don't know what it's foreshadowing and they don't give you enough information to possibly put it together yourself but you know the movie's going somewhere right the movie has thrust for the first two acts but then in the third act all the characters just get sort of conveniently forced into a room together so they can stand around and tell each other the plot (laughs) i just i couldn't get over how insane this is it's like it goes to such efforts to contrive them all into the same room. Literally just so they can go, all right, anyone not been paying attention? Here's here's what's been happening. We're gonna we're gonna walk you through it. <laughs> this is what we've been and, this, and, is, this is what this has all been about. It would have been nice to have steaks sooner, but we'll, we'll tell you now. <laughs> and and on that, because there's kind of two moments of that. There's Depp doing that at the Grindelwald doing that at the end. And there's all the, the strange stuff, right? Yeah. Well, the, the strange stuff is, the, is, the, is what I'm talking about. That's when, yeah, you know, yeah, it's yeah. when they all get into but, a room and tell each other their backstories. Yeah, it's appalling. Now, so on that then, Dan, uh, do we think, and we, you know, we, we are getting right into it this time, but you know, we'll do the usual. For context of our Harry Potter history, check out, you know, episode episode one. And we did a bit of our Fantastic Beast history um, in the last episode as well. When we yeah, did we, we, I should um, at some point clarify what my experience with this film was the first time, but we'll, we'll come back to that. We're, we're, we're in it now. Yeah. We're here. Let's Let's finish this point while we're on it. <laughs> Yeah, whereas I've I've never I've never seen it before. Now, Dan, here's my question. Yes. Is it as simple as taking out the Lestrange stuff? Well <laughs> Would that just free up everything? It it would, but then the movie would be about nothing. The pro the problem this movie what? has is what it's about is so unnecessarily complicated that the and, and it's so determined to be a mystery that it spends the whole movie laying little like teases that don't really add up to much on their own and then because it's not if successfully giving you enough pieces to put it together it then has to grind to a halt to put it together for you and that but what if credence what if credence is in paris hiding grindelwald's there chasing him and tina goes we let him down in the last movie. We didn't help him. We didn't save yeah. him. In 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 2016's Fantastic Beasts of Where to Find Them, we really let Credence down. 
But you know what I mean, like. That, but that's I'm just making a suggestion for. Yeah, no, no, um, I, no. I agree. She... I was just making a joke about the way you phrased it in the last film, like the idea that she might note that it's a film, <laughs> like she's naming the oh, film. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was making a joke. <laughs> There's a about flashback. That. Yeah. Um. But yeah, and you know, you just have you have her go there, and and Newt, because uh, Newt Newt chases Tina. That's that's Newt and Jacob's flimsy plot uh, to get them involved. You keep you keep that in there. Um. Yeah. No, I I think that is part of it. I I think if you strip out some of the complex, the unnecessary complexity, because the the I think I, I might have made a note about this. Like actually, where is it? It's like the entire elaborate plot about babies being switched at birth is also we can get bait and switched on Credence's heritage. Why? What's the purpose of that? It feels like a plot, but it's not. It's just distractions. Mate, like how much? M- way more so than the last film. How much did this film still feel like a Harry Potter book adaptation in the sense that it felt like they couldn't quite do everything, we were missing some of the nuance, but they were trying to tell the story verbatim in a novel where yeah. some of that shit can be fleshed out a bit more. I, I that, think... You know, it's still it's amazing how much this one, more than the last one, felt like... A yep. book adaptation with the same problems as the Harry Potter book adaptation. And, and I'll tell you exactly why. Because JK has spent her career writing novels. And when she was mm. conceiving the plot for this, she came up with a novel's worth of plot and mystery. But she wasn't mm. sitting down to turn it into a novel. She was sitting down to turn it into a screenplay. And then she had to make those same sorts of weird cuts that you'd have to make yeah. adapting a novel. I honestly feel like the better option with these movies would have been to have her go off and write a book and then turn it into a movie later on. Like Warner Brothers just say to her, look, we're, like, we're on board. Fantastic beast. Sounds fun. Don't write a screenplay. Write a book. You can sell that. You'll make a bajillion. We'll adapt it later. Hmm. Like, rather than let her do these screenplays. And what's funny is, obviously, this is a complete opposite to the to what I was excited for. I mean, I, as I explained last week, I was excited for the first Fantastic Beast movie because I remember thinking, wow, JK writing. Like, no matter what you feel about her, and we've said this in every other podcast, but I'll say it here in case you're just jumping in on this one. Obviously, JK, boo. We, you know, we, we, it, we, it, we, you know, she's clearly a, making some really terrible choices and saying some very hurtful things, and we're obviously against that. I just for, our, for the purposes of this conversation, it would be a fiction to pretend that at one point in my life I wasn't a huge fan of her work and still respect the work and still love the work, even if I have now all these these problems with the person um, for using her platform to spread such, you know, um, horrible shite. Um, but with that said, I was excited for the first Fantastic Beasts because I remember thinking that's the way to do it. Give it to JK. Let her tell the story. It'll be way better than having Cloves do it or whatever. So let's go. Let's you know. Let's let's do this. But it turns out what she needed was a competent screenwriter to sit down with her, maybe, and like pare it down and go, look, now you've too many ideas to fit in a movie. Um, it, and it's 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 not just in the way the plot unfolds; it's also in the number of characters, the sheer obscene number of unnecessary characters this movie introduces. If they're going to be something, and then they don't do anything with them, that is book stuff. That happens in the book all the time. There are lots of like fun, quirky characters that fill out the world in the book. Because in a book, you've got time to give them a scene or two that doesn't have to be necessarily directly you know, involved in the plot plot. Just texture and a fun scene. Because a book has the room to do that kind of thing. Um, and, and again, it, it becomes entertaining, you know, fills out the world or whatever. You don't get to do that in these movies. There's, there's just too much going on. You, you've, got to, you've got to move at a much faster pace. There's way less space to do it. Stop it. Bad JK. <laughs> And the fact that, like, obviously it's J.K. Rowling. Like, who's going to tell her no? I get it. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, you know, as confidently as I've sat here and shat on many of these movies, I, I'm not going to be the one to tell her that the script is a pile of shite. <clears throat> Are you? It's J.K. Mm-hmm. fucking Rowling. What do I know? You yeah, know, prior, yeah. prior yeah, to it coming sure. out and seeing the finished product and being able to go, mm, actually, no, that was bad. She hands me a script. So- and I'm anyone in any industry. I'm just like, it's J.K. Rowling. Like she's literally famous for writing. I, 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 how, how can I, executive, such a body, such a body, say anything about this? This is, I, I have to just. This is fine, I guess. <laughs> the so so back to it coming out. Then what was your experience? What's your history seeing it for the first time? Yeah, so I, I slightly burnt on the first one in that I, I, I felt like it was 
trying to do too many things um, and I wish that they just stri- stripped it to either one or the other and then I saw the trailer for this one and, and knew we were in for more of the same um, I was intrigued that they were doing a bit more stuff to connect it to Harry Potter the the, 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 the books and well, the films I guess we were, we were visiting Hogwarts they revealed that Nagini was in the movie in the trailers and Nicholas Fumel and I just thought like well some of this seems like it might be superfluous just like winking and nodding like hey, hey do you remember that do you remember that do you remember that from that thing you like but i thought well we'll start, I'll see it in action first and i uh, you know tying it into the to the to the harry potter universe is is kind of intriguing you know um so i was kind of like cautiously optimistic that maybe she'd like sussed it out in the meantime but the trailer did look very dark and very focused on the wizard war stuff and i kind of went oh that's probably going to be a bit shit but then i was like ah, but then again at least if it focuses on that it won't have the problem with the first one um, where it's like trying to be two movies at once. Maybe she's picked a lane. Um, so I was kind of like somewhere in the middle on this one. Like I had a lot of anti, like uh, a lot of like I think valid reasons to be concerned. This was going to be a big pile of shite, and I think you know I tried to squash those with like she'll have learnt from the last experience. The trailer doesn't look completely terrible. Like there's some elements of it that I think are seeming interesting. Like you know I kind of talked myself into being in a kind of a optimistic place about it. Um, and then I went and saw it, and uh, <laughs> it's it's a, it's a bad movie. It's a it's a real bad movie. I remember coming out of it, and I think I said something to Nadia at the time, like, you know, in Star Wars, when they've got to do the trench run, and it's like a real difficult thing that they've got to do, and loads of them fail, and Luke's the only one that gets through, and then he's got to make this impossible shot, and you know, he has to really concentrate his force. It's like a really tense moment. It's like. It's a shame there wasn't just like a destroy Death Star button that if they all worked together and pushed at the same time, it would just solve the problem. That'd be great. <laughs> because the end of this movie, because the because the because movie needs action beat, apparently a movie needs stakes after the ending is just Grindelwald does a speech and escapes. So he leaves behind some sort of death curse thing and um, everyone just puts their wands to the ground and solves the problem. Cool. Thanks, yes. movie. It is, and and I was so conflicted about that in a way, though, because I'm like, well, it's different. <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's not yeah, a sky- yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's different. It's not a sky beam. It's not a monster destroying a city. It is. It is different. You do. I can. It's it's, it's it's as you said at the beginning. I can understand what you're going for. You're going for the shit. Queenie's gonna turn. Who else is gonna turn? Is the brother gonna turn? Is Lestrange gonna turn? Like, what's What's happening here? Like, who's going to turn that? If you've done the work with the characters properly, mm-hmm. that could be quite exciting. Yep. Um, yeah. Choosing the woman who's in love. Let's delve into this then. Choosing the woman who's in love with a with a nomad slash muggle who can hear what everyone is thinking. So no. understands. I'm glad the, you're making this the, point. <laughs> yes, carry the, on. Sorry, the, I just wanna, I'm just co-signing this while you're saying it. <laughs> the, understands the you know the pure intentions of what someone could yeah. say because she understands what they're thinking. Why is that the character you choose to go over to the dark side? What the fuck's going on? Like there is no justification for that in this movie. Well, that's the thing. There just isn't. Well, that's the thing. It's it, that's the biggest thing for me is like Queenie is a perfect example of why this doesn't work. I think because Queenie is a is a fun character, and there's, they do and and look, it's an interesting choice. I I do think having Queenie, one of our you know sort of beloved leads, as it were, turn for what on the surface, as long as you don't think about it too much, is a really logical reason. Because we've established that she's not allowed to marry um, Jacob. Um, but doing it in the way they do it so, here... Uh, so uh, so killing killing him is a, is, the, is, the, is the right choice, then, is it? Well, if I can't marry you, I guess logically, well, yeah, we should kill is, all of you. Well, the thing is, though, that's, that's... If you, you know, they do... To be fair to that point, Gr- Grindelwald does sort of say in his speech, I don't want to kill him. He wants to. He wants to stop them from doing another world war. That's that's. I mean, that's like ah. Oh, once they get to the World War Two stuff, Jesus Christ. But let's just focus on Queenie for now, because I we'll, we'll we'll cover Grindelwald in a bit, I guess. 
Ugh, mixed motives or what? I don't know what he fucking wants. But anyway, um, with with Queenie, the issue is it's just too hard to... They don't do enough for you to believe she would make that choice. They don't justify her siding with a murderer. No. Not she may have differences with the political state in America and want to marry Jacob but not be able to. They, but they don't do enough to show her having been pushed far enough, made desperate enough, to go to an extreme. I think there's a version of this movie where you do a scene where she literally tries to marry Jacob and they throw him in jail or they mistreat him or something horrible happens. And she then... And how- and she then has cause to go to such an extreme, but they yeah, just don't the, well, do the problem, enough. I, th- I think the problem is they try and shortcut that by exactly. at the beginning she's put him under a love potion because she, he's adamant that they won't marry because it could risk her life. So she's put her him under a love potion to make him forget about that fact. Even though he doesn't need to love her, he already loves her. He's just his love is trying to protect her. So she's misguided in that moment. So there, you know, that that is trying to, you know, that is already an extreme, and then she goes to more of an extreme. That is the movie JK's logic. But the, the problem the, 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 is, well, I mean, it make, all makes her so unlikable for a start. I mean, that first. Well, thing yeah, is... it makes her unlikable, but also you can't you can't slap us three steps down the road of a story. When it means you have to rush the explanation for what on earth happened at the end of, you know, steps two to three. Because when we left off, he'd had his memory erased, although I love that the getting around that is the floor in the in the rain, which we talked about on the last podcast. Yeah, and I, you know what's so <laughs> funny is I must have subconsciously remembered that. I, so I didn't consciously remember that that was in this movie at all. I, I couldn't remember how they explained his memory being back. Um, so when we talked about it last week, I said, why not have this movie end with him being like, hey, I didn't forget everything because it makes you forget bad memories and I made friends or something. I, I pitched that and I had no idea that's actually what they do. But in this movie, why rob the previous movie of a really good character beat and then rushedly stick it in this one? It just so, it's so strange. much, so much of it feels like. She can say it was mapped out and planned all she wants, but if it was mapped out and planned, why did you end Credence where you did? Why did you end up Jacob where he did? Exactly. Why Why did you, so, you know, separate Tina? And, uh, just Grindelwald, yeah. Grindel- Grindelwald's the same. What, like, they, they, like, in the last movie, Grindelwald wanted uh, uh, an Obscurus to expose Wizardkind to the Muggles. Now he wants him because he's 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 the only one quote unquote that can destroy Dumbledore. Yeah, because this blood curse has suddenly been introduced. It's there's so much of it that wasn't that wasn't doesn't feel mapped out at all because this feels like trying to trying to back a load of exposition and add it to not just Fantastic Beasts but also Harry Potter, which is obviously what annoyed a lot of people as well with the Dumbledore stuff, but. Mm. Yeah, it's just crazy, isn't it? Yeah, and I think as well, like, she she keeps, like, she keeps doing strange things with, like, her own, like, logic. Like, like, Occlumency is different in the book to to this movie. And and I get it, because, like, the movie is, I guess, a continuation of the movies. And in the the Half-Blood, no, Order of the Phoenix movie, they don't have that conversation that's in the book between harry and snape where harry's like what so it's mind reading and snape's like no no it's nothing like mind reading mind reading well you simple-minded child no you enter someone's thoughts and feelings and memories you can't read their thoughts like words on a page i think he even says a line like that that's in the book now whether these are a prequel to the books or the movies i don't know if i can take a take your pick i guess if they're supposed to be a prequel to the books because they're written by JK and are therefore like a different level of canon or something. Um, yeah, way to forget that. Congratulations. But also, like, forgetting how the mirror of Erisad works is a pretty big one. Um, yeah. it, sho- it, sh- it shows you your heart's desire, not just like convenient plot memories. Um, that's a fucking 
that's a weird use of that. Why not just have him looking into a pensive? Also, um, J.K. seems to have forgotten that in um, this in Chamber of Secrets, um, Dumble- uh, Dumbledore is is clarified as to as, as having been a Transfiguration teacher. Um, now, unless they're saying he switched careers as a result of this movie, or not careers, but like less, you know, uh, subjects. You know, Subjects, because Subjects, yeah. I think in this movie the guy does throw in a quick line of like, and you can't teach defense against the dark arts anymore, mm. Dumbledore, which might be her way of being able to like, because sh- she, <laughs> it might have been her going, oh, I'd like to show him doing defense against the dark arts because then I can, s- s- you know, s- slap in the 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 bogger, which apparently is a really clear part of the curriculum because <laughs> they're doing it in the exact same way in the exact same room, um, handy that um, as the kids from the other one, but fine, uh, and he's teaching them like how to you know how to do spell like combat and stuff like oh that has to be defense against the dark arts so i have to somehow make that jive with the fact that he was listed as transfiguration teacher in the chamber of secrets book i don't know it's just lots of weird like continuity stuff she seems to be fighting yeah, with her own but in like, order in order for in order for that to work the notion is that they took off the shackles and the chains but they kept the rule about him not teaching defense against the dark arts <laughs> right so, but he just but got really into transfiguration in those few few days. Yeah, and he's like, now I'm sticking with transfiguration. Actually, I really like it. Um, what's McGonagall gonna do? What's 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 young McGonagall gonna do? I don't know. She'll 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 appear in a shot where I say her name and you barely see her because she's behind a bunch of kids and the audience will still cheer. And let me tell you, Chris, when I saw this in the cinema, the audience cheered. Oh God! But that's and that, is that the is that part of the problem? Because. There's so much, there's a lot of fan stuff for the sake of it that has no real purpose. Does not, this movie does not need Nicholas Flamel in it. It feels like there's about four deleted scenes with Nicholas Flamel. So we understand what the fuck's going on there. I just, I do love him showing up at the end. It feels so, like, I can't, I, I, this is, uh, last year I, li- I listened to Nando V Movies reviews of these and I've, not come back to them since for fear of points coming through but i'm sure at one point he talked about this is it being like nicholas favell clearly the only wizard that has no ability to apparate because it seems if you watch this movie it just appears that he just like after um the characters see him and then you know apparate off to the adventure he then like puts on his coat wanders out his front door and just sort of walks there because he shows up like hours later that's why it takes him so long (laughs) And he just sort of like wanders up like, hey guys, I'm very conveniently arrived in time to give you a suggestion on how to beat this thing. The the mirror thing is really like, why isn't that offensive? <laughs> like, yeah, like, it's, 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 I guess they just it's wanted the visual bizarre. of the mirror, but like it doesn't, that's not how the mirror works. Like, and, and what's even more upsetting is there's a really emotional moment in the book when Harry decides that the thing Dumbledore will have seen when he looked in the mirror of Erisad was his sister. Like alive and well. That's the thing he wanted more than anything. His family alive and well, actually. A lifting of responsibility. And the idea that for a cheap bit of crappy exposition that they've thrown that really heartfelt character idea away is insane to me. Because, yeah, the, like, but, like you know, said, the all... pensive exists. I, I don't know why we even... There's no... The thing is, that if I if I was sitting here going, there's literally no other way to do this flashback or do this, you know, get this information across, I guess we've had to sacrifice that fine. But there's a really simple way around it, and I don't know why we're not doing it. I, I, I'm, it's because I'm baffled. More, because, this, because this is a more cinematic and dramatic image. Is it bent over looking? Yeah, that that be. Oh, and if it's the pensive, it becomes. Why wouldn't? Why didn't he go into the memory? Why didn't we see a flashback? It yeah. It's it's it just feels like cheap reasons like that. Well, speaking of cheap forcing things in, how are we feeling about the animals, Chris? <laughs> the fa- the Fantastic Beasts. Oh, God. I wrote some questions actually for this franchise this week. Um, so, enough Fantastic Beasts in my Magical Beasts movie is question one, and the sub question is: Are they woven into the plot naturally? <laughs> uh, no, and no. Uh, they're only in the beginning. Um, they are. There's the, the equivalent going into the suitcase scene, going into the water basement <laughs> mm-hmm. outdoor area that would be that would be the equivalent and you know it's a magical fun scene but then that's pretty much it apart from nagini throughout the well, film i, I um, i'm gonna i'm gonna slightly 
I, I have a slightly different answer. I think there are enough beasts, but I don't think they're woven in naturally because there's a whole circus full of beasts. A bunch of those escape. He catches them. He a big big lion one, and then towards the end of the movie when they're stuck in the the French Ministry of Magic and that insane librarian record keeper lady finally decides to do something about the fact that obviously not where they're supposed to be. She brings those like cats out and then they bring out a bigger cat to fight them. <laughs> Just, and, well, then, well, and then, and then, and then, and then who steals, the, who steals the blood oath back, Chris? Cause I'll tell you what, it ain't no wizard. It's a fucking oh, niffler. Right. Okay. I don't think that disparate. Right. So, so well, it, the, I'm still, I'm still, I'm still agreeing with you on they are not woven in naturally, but I'm disagreeing on are there enough of them? I think that's plenty of animals for a movie called Fantastic Beasts. I just don't think they're put main, in very my, conveniently. My main point on that was they're sort of in the beginning and forgotten about. So the the circus scene with with Tina is around the half an hour mark, and then mm. the um the the cats thing. I mean, you summed it up beautifully for me. They bring out three cats and then they bring out a bigger cat. It's right. great. Um, and then, <laughs> so and then the Niffler thing is at the end. So, like, my point is, like, okay, maybe there's enough, but they're crammed. I changed my point then. Instead of there's not enough and they only appear at the beginning, there is enough, but they only appear at the beginning and the very end, and there's a little bit it, it spread in the middle. But, mm. you know, the the bulk of this film is a bizarre credence lestrange mystery that no one that they don't do enough to make you care about right that is the big issue isn't it it's investment i was not invested in any of this like the uh, i i was i must admit i enjoy the hogwarts flashback out of i guess nostalgia and i feel awful that i'm even saying that i like the hogwarts stuff in this movie um but i tell you what i don't like chris ham-fisted mystery baiting where it's Oh, um, she's 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 looked at the bogger, and the bogger has turned into a weird thing that you can't possibly identify as what that is. You could maybe think it's something in a sheet. You could maybe think it's something floating in water, but you couldn't, from that image, put together that's <laughs> the brother she accidentally got killed by doing a weird bait and switch because it was crying too much on her boat ride over, like. And and the baby she did save was Credence, and that one is her brother, and it's now dead. Like, all of that stuff, like, you couldn't put it together. with. That's the other thing. A good mystery, when you get the answer, you can go back and put it together. You can, Or you can, at the very least, there are enough pieces there that it is physically possible to make sense of it before it's revealed. But th- there just isn't. There's no de- there's no information here. It's just that. That weird, ominous image. And you go, well, I guess that's a mystery they'll tell me later. Like I guess that'll yeah. happen, and uh, Mate, yeah, I watched the entire movie, and I'm still not entirely sure. My best understanding of what all that was about was just then when you summarised it. I was like, oh, that's quite succinct. That's more succinct than the movie makes it. Yeah, I mean, look, here's the thing. She, yeah, so so, so Little Estrange, there was a whole, yeah, no, there's, a, there's a whole thing uh, for listeners. Just for anyone who doesn't who's not seen this movie in a while, I should probably clarify because I, I do think it is un- needlessly complicated. Um, Basically, um, the the daddy Lestrange was a bastard, and he only wanted a son. He didn't care about any daughters, so he had Lita. Didn't give a shit about her. All he wanted was a son. Had a son, and then he decided to ship him off. I don't know why, but he shipped him off with Lita, and he cried a lot. So Lita <laughs> switched him with a neighbor's baby because <laughs> the neighbor's baby was quieter, just for a few minutes of peace and quiet. Then she was going to switch them back, I guess, and then. The boat sinks during that time, and obviously she's with the baby that's that's not hers, and is that is rescued on the grounds of she, it was with her, and she gets into a rescue boat or whatever, and the 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 OG baby, the actual estranged baby, just drowns, and it turns out the baby that's left and is now orphaned was Credence, who get this everyone is a Dumbledore. <clears throat> We'll, we'll come back to that because that was at the end. But like, um, so, but my—I why... guess my point is like, though, if the movie is about Credence trying to figure out who he is, if that's the premise of the movie, it's a shitty way to do it. <laughs> but do you think? Do you think? Why do you think it it fails? Do you think it's too complicated? Do you think we because it's mainly being done with a character we didn't really see in the first film and a character we didn't see at all in the first film, and a, so and a, no, and a character we, we barely see in this one. 
Yeah, so we don't see, we don't feel the weight of any of it because it's with characters that we haven't grown to care about. Um, yeah, and is and is also like fucked up. It hinges, it hinges fundamentally on someone swapping a baby because they're crying a lot, which is like, which is such a fucked up idea that you probably need to go into more detail about it than have have a flashback showing it as someone is saying it. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, but that's the thing is like she didn't know how to. This is the problem as well. She's not got the tools to communicate in a visual medium information. She's got the tools to communicate through book, you know, methods. And in the book, they'd all gather around and have a chat about what the plot is, <laughs> and that's fine. That's you know, one of our favorite Harry Potter books. We've said this multiple times. Is Prisoner of Azkaban, which has a huge section towards the end, which we often cite as being a really good section of the book. Well, they just have a sit around and tell each other what the plot was. <laughs> and it's fine. And it works. But it does not work in a movie. There's a reason why when Curon took on that film and, and uh, Cloves took on that film, they didn't do it that way. As many problems as I had with Cloves' choices during their scripts, he at least knew that much. You know. Mm. The, the, so that scene was much, much, much shorter and information was given out throughout the movie in other subtle ways. You know, and in other, you know, other ways through the end of it, like it the, the weren't just them sat around talking, visual cues and such. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm struggling. I'm struggling because a lot of the characters also feel like they're. This is this is hand of the writer stuff. This is like the characters had to make choices. Why uh, for the plot to happen? Yeah, 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 for sure. And also, like her whole oh her arc for Newt, like what what the fuck was happening? In, with the, with this thinking on this on Newt for this movie, because the whole opening of the movie, Dumbledore's all like Newt, you know, you know why I respect you, I admire you the most is you. You don't seek power or popularity. You simply ask, is this thing right in itself? And that's a great line and a potentially great character if that is describing who Newt is. But then Newt basically is like, nah, mate, and then decides to go to France once he thinks Tina's there and not before. That's bad. Yeah, I mean, it's just bad. Like, it's, there's no... Because also, like, why is he... Oh, because he knows, I guess, that Tina thinks he's marrying someone, so he wants to correct that and make it But yeah, but then he meets her and, and proceeds to not do that for, like, two days. Yeah, oh, yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not <sighs> saying it justified. I'm trying to pick up what the movie's explanation is for uh. it. But yeah, because it completely undermines... Him doing it just because it's the it's the right thing to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that's the thing is like okay, I, I like I credit them for trying to give uh, Newt the arc in this one of the cho- I've chosen my side bit right, but so earlier in the movie he says I don't have sides like I don't I'm not on anyone's side I'll just do the right thing, which kind of links into that Dumbledore stuff right, but the other side. You know, oh, so he goes from I don't have sides to actually the other side has murdered my childhood friend now and possibly my love. So I guess I have chosen a side. But is that truly earned? Because if you just sort of tell us that's the arc, but don't we don't ever see any of it demonstrated in the plot or Newt's choices. He's a very passive character in this adventure. It's just like happening around him. And that's another big issue, I think, with all these characters. It feels that often like they're just sort of being swept along in like the, the madness. And it's not helped by well, the fact it, they do multiple Dumbledores pulling the strings moments throughout the movie. Yeah. 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 But, but, but if that is Newt's arc, that he's a, he does the right thing and he doesn't have a side in this necessarily, he's just going to do what's right in the moment. Like he doesn't, He's not going to be blindly loyal to any one person. That's very admirable. But then the end of the movie, the reveal is now, after, his, after Lita is essentially murdered, he's like, yeah, now I've chosen my side. He says it to his brother as he gives him the hug. And I'm like, how is that a satisfying arc? Like, that's a character going from like a noble person that will do the right thing to, no, I'm going to blindly follow Dumbledore now. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> Congrats, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it's well. It's the same. It's the same with Jacob. Like right. Jacob's just there, literally because he's there. Yes, that's like, the thing. Like, I love Jacob. I find any excuse to bring Jacob back from my perspective. Until you watch the movie and you go, actually, no, don't do it if you're not going to actually find a use for him in the plot. Yeah, which is and 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 look, I love Dan Fogel. I think he's. I think he's. He is. What he's doing with a muddled, confused plot uh, is amazing. His performance is absolutely stunning in this, but I, I'm completely with you. He is 
really, well, apart from you could argue, I guess, if you're going to do the queenie thing, it adds weight to the queenie stuff. But, it, you know, it's it's so muddled that I'm like, it's probably cleaner if he's just not in this, surely. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's a little like, does it really? I, I was thinking about that. Do they actually use it to add weight to the queenie thing? So if queenie showed up, right, and she's like, look, Jacob's still back in America, happily doing his pastries, but I love him and I want to marry him. And I'm thinking, like, I've come over to England to talk to you about it because I think you guys are more tolerant over here. Maybe I could bring Jacob over here. What do you think, New? That's maybe that's the start of the movie, right? And then it is just her being brought over on the grounds of where Jacob currently is in America. That is not legal, and you don't need to actually have him be part of the plot because they barely re- interact. Uh, if if they had loads of scenes together, really powerful scenes, I would say that really does add to Queenie's situation and turn but they barely interact in this movie they have i think two scenes together mm. so i'm wondering how is it even worth having him in the movie just for those two scenes i don't know how much it adds to her plot because you can easily do her plot with it being like jacob's this far away thing that she can't get and she's frustrated with the the american sort of society like their their weird thing about non-magic and magical folk you know uh, being together and like play it from there because having Jacob in and having those two arguing all the time and having her do all these questionable things to keep him around, like love potioning him or whatever, just makes her character weaker, I think. Because it makes her less likely. Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. And you have to but do then, all these weird contrivances to keep Jacob around. They have to keep contriving reasons for him to be around. You wouldn't have to do any of that if he's just still back in America, oblivious. Yeah. Yeah, and then we... well, and Because the movie... Well, it's, again... If she wants to have her turn, I guess the movie needs Queenie. But that, well, that's the problem. The problem with this movie is it doesn't really need anyone apart from Grindelwald. Like, do you know what I mean? <laughs> Everyone else either, is just sort of him. there. I don't, I don't well, let's let's talk about him. So, what are your what are your what are your gropes with Dan's gropes with Grindelwald? Grindelwald. <laughs> um, this section of the review. Yeah, <laughs> Dan's gropes with Grindy. Um, <laughs> Grindy and Dumby. Um, well, first of all, I don't like queer baiting. I don't think it's, I don't think it's right. I don't think, I don't think hinting two people might have been, but never actually outright saying it because you're fucking cowards is a good thing. Um, so they could just fuck off in general with all that. I think that's awfully handled. Um, outright say it, I you would absolute agree. cowards. Um, stepping away from that, I don't like his ever shifting motives. It feels like they didn't really know what they wanted to do with him. So the first movie, it's, 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 oh, I want to. I want to reveal the magical world to the Muggles, which is in line with the book and what we know about Grindelwald from the book. And I was like, okay, that yeah, yeah, makes sense. You know, it's, it's a little different from Voldemort. Voldemort wasn't about revealing themselves. He was about subjugation. Grindelwald is different in that he's not really about subjugation in the same way, but he does think that wizards should... Not in the same way, anyway. He doesn't want to just murder them all. He he's he wants to rule, and he thinks that they you have the right to rule and all that jazz. And it's a little different, I guess. Not hugely, but different enough. There's a subtle distinction you can draw there. Then it's like, oh, okay. Now it's all about killing Dumbledore, which is fine because I guess oh, Voldemort wanted to do that too because Voldemort was knew Dumbledore was like the wizard that could stop him. Okay, so we're doing another Voldemort thing, but fine, it fits still. But then it's like, oh, all I want is Credence because Credence can do it. Okay, you want Credence for that reason. Now, that's a different reason to the reason you wanted him in the last movie. That's fine. All right. Now it's, oh, World War II is coming. Muggles are bad. Okay. Muggle, so the, you've, you've foreseen World War II, and now, you want, now you're trying to stop a war. That's, a, again, very different motive. Now, part of me thinks, oh, maybe the fansplaining thing is that that's just his manipulation he just wants to rule and he's 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 he does know about world war ii but he's just he's lying about caring about it but the movie doesn't make that clear so i've got to go i've got to take it at face value and say that's what he thinks um all right i guess we've changed it again but fine and then wait a minute Gr- grindelwald doesn't seem to understand the nature of things he considers simple oh so we're doing voldemort again then okay cool because that was voldemort's whole deal was was you know not seeing the little guy, you know, being tricked by a house elf in the same way that Grindy, Gr- Grindelwald... I'm, I'm just going to start calling it Grindy. Uh, Grindy is tricked here with the Niffler. I, I don't know. I just There's too much Voldemort in Grindelwald, and I, I don't need another Voldemort. We had a Voldemort. 
Yeah, and I think you could have you could have done something if you'd have picked just one of those things, not the more Voldemort of them, but if you'd have picked the the World War One, or if if you'd have picked the starting a war between Muggles and Wizards, so Wizard kind weren't weren't in hiding. Although that's quite similar to Voldemort, I think you know there are again interesting ideas and concepts but it just it all feels too close to Voldemort even even one of the first things being the action of killing a child and with that one I was like why I I know this is such a dark sentence but why isn't Grindelwald the one to kill the baby like you want to set up this guy as as villainous and you want it in a world where we know there is a more ultimate villain of this universe coming and he ain't it one shorthand you could have done to still make the audience go, oh, fucking hell, though, is if you had Grindelwald kill that child, especially when technically Voldemort couldn't kill a child. Like, it would have been a really easy shorthand to go, this guy is a massive prick, guys, but you don't even have him do that. You have another character do it, you know? Yeah, it's I, I didn't, yeah, I didn't care for that either. Because I just think as well, like, just killing a baby, it's like, the laziest short even like even cheap. I, regardless yeah, of cheap regardless of who does it like be more inventive i want to make my yeah. villain seem like a real villain mm, how should i do he kills a baby it's like what a child would write it's like it's really embarrassingly dumb I don't... all right all right all right children and george lucas calm down um <laughs> <laughs> yeah no it's like i say it's lazy it's lazy shorthand like the, basically just... the movie might as well put the text on screen or have no they, 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 one of his little one of his like henchmen might, should turn to the camera and be like you know he's bad because he's willing to kill a baby and then wink and then move on with the scene like in a sort of like she hawk like to the camera fourth wall break that's what we need <laughs> That's how you know he's real bad. <laughs> and then a big neon sign should light up over, over Grindelwald. Bad guy. And it's just flashing and arrows. <laughs> so I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. I didn't think the performance was that bad. Oh, the performance was all right. It's I don't fine, know if that's but... because of... I don't know if that's because of what, in my head, it could have been. <laughs> like, so, like, you know, it could have been... Yeah, in a world know, where we had Johnny on the Depp doing... to do Bellatrix... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it could have been like classic Johnny Depp, and and it wasn't that. So I don't know whether it's surprised that it wasn't that that makes me go that performance wasn't that bad. No, he's, it's he's, not as good as Dan. F- yeah, it's not as good as Dan Fogler or Jude Law. They're the best performances in the movie. Um, mm-hmm. But Jude Law more so, I think, um, mm-hmm. purely because Dan Fogler is struggling because of what the script is giving him. Um, but Jude Law, as you said, is a is a wonderful Dumbledore. Um, the the exact right balance of of kindness and gentle twinkle and also you know get the feeling could be real menace and 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 toughness there um Mm -hmm. i think uh it's a really it's a really hard challenge to to play a young version of someone so iconically older and so iconically Mm -hmm. this grand wizard with mystique to try and play that character at a point where that mystique you know can't exist yet because they're not old enough is a huge challenge to the point where you know <laughs> if i'm jk i'm not even attempting to 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 write it i'm going young dumbledore just doesn't seem right so for jude law to do it as well as he did when all of that is a is against him uh is is fantastic it's a it's a wonderful performance yeah, I echo all of that. Uh, I, it's 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 you know as someone who had a lot of negative things to say about how Dumbledore was portrayed in the previous ones, this is perfect. Yeah, you you I, you you said it perfectly. I I don't need to repeat what you said, but it's 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 the right balance of everything. Uh, Jude Law is an absolute masterstroke of casting, and uh, it's a shame he wasn't. You know, uh, you know, he wasn't old enough to do Dumble, old Dumbledore, Dumbledore in those days, because uh, it's so good that you just you ache for that. Like maybe in a, you know, and maybe in ten years time, twenty years time, we, we they got to remake the Harry Potter movies and they let Jude Law be Dumbledore for real. Um, in the in the in the you know in the sort of like the the, the Harry Potter story and let him play you know old long beard Dumbledore. Um, I'd like to see it. Although you know, mm. also wouldn't want to you know, lose handsome Jude Law to the beard, but <laughs> I guess I'm talking in 20 years' he's, time when he might have a beard anyway. Because um, it it's got it's got to be a... said, Chris, you know, never thought I'd say it, but that is very easy to get lost in Dumbledore's eyes. <laughs> oh, Jude Law is a handsome... Jude Law's so, like, 
<laughs> classically handsome. Yes, Do you is. know what I mean? Yeah. And he's, you know like, what it is as well? Yeah. It's a combination of being like good looking and also very charming. <laughs> like he's got a real It is, it's that twinkle in the eye. I'm telling you, man. He's he's yeah, perfect casting. Anyway, um yeah. big thumbs up for Jude Here's Law. a question. Here's a here's a here's a little one for you, Dan. Mm-hmm. A little one to chuck in. A lot of uh, scenes in Harry Potter where mi- Newt's, uh, Newt's magical dust that shows you exactly what happened the day before would have been quite handy, isn't there? Yeah, I mean, I, well, also the special cuffs that can that can, that can, that can uh, track your every move yeah. and spell. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we got. We got Death Eaters that we're not quite sure about that that we're letting off in Harry Potter. Maybe maybe the cuffs on uh, on Snape and Lucius Malfoy wouldn't have well, not Snape, but you know what I mean in in the yeah, principle I, of the I, world. No, I, I think in a, in a post Voldemort <laughs> world, if those cuffs exist, you put them on basically anyone that you suspect and go. All right, here's the deal: we're not putting you in jail. You, you're escaping Azkaban, you lucky fucker, because we can't quite prove it. But you are sort of going to be monitored because I think you know. You, you, you're you clearly a fucking bad guy because you're wearing leather and have the long greasy hair like every other fucking bad guy in these movies. You... <laughs> well, also, you've got you've got that bad guys club tattoo. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. We we checked your arm. We reveal we we did a revealio. That's the other thing. You do you do these movies, uh, and I think that this I might be seeing another point from none of your movies here, so I feel very bad. But I'm just I'm starting to remember his reviews of these really vividly because I maybe he was more passionately against these Fantastic Beast movies because I didn't really remember the stuff he said for the the books, but um for the for he did say after watching um, Fantastic Beasts, revealio everyone forever because in that in the last movie. They just point the wand at Colin Farrell and go Revealio and he becomes Johnny Depp. And it's just like, every teacher that comes through Hogwarts, Revealio. Oh, you've got Voldemort in the back of your head. Revealio. Oh, you're actually Barty Crouch Jr. <laughs> like, how many things would have been solved? You just Revealio every single fucking person that either works at the ministry or works at Hogwarts. <laughs> That's a really fucking good point, Nando. Is a uh, that so, yeah. how does that whole sequence? But the, back so to your really original bad. one though, the the the, the magical detective yeah. vision where you get to do the gold sparks and you can sort of you, oh they they stood right here. Can I ask you a question about that, Chris? Other than yeah, that'd be potentially useful. What does it do here though? I know. What does That's Newt so learn from weird. that? What does Newt learn from it? That she was there and that the, a man appeared and and might have taken her. Or knew her or interacted with her. So what he knows is that Tina, the person he's looking for, that he already knows is in Paris, is in Paris and met someone. Yep. That's cool. what he knows. That's what he learns. That's that's That seems worth doing. The, the frustrating thing is as well, though, there's so much... Like, it is an interesting visual, and I don't hate it for that. Like, I, I really... Like, the movie needs weird little quirky uses of magic like that. These... these You know, we talked a lot about, like, the wizarding world needing to feel like like magic is just being used to solve all problems and do all things, because there's just loads of really interesting weird shit you can do with it. Um because there's literally no limit on it's it's, it's magic <laughs> you know there's no limit so i i don't mind the idea of newt arriving somewhere and using sort of magical tracking techniques because you could sort of go oh well he uses these when he's out in the wild to track beasts but in the movie he does it but then it doesn't actually give him any information he needs <laughs> like I, I just think like let him let him use his magic to find out something. <laughs> Other than and, just that just, Tina or, was there or, at some point. Because he already knows that. Or, or find a way for it to be a beast that tells him that. Do you know what I mean? Fine. Like, yeah, also fine. Sure. Find a way that you know, he puts he it's 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 like a it's like a magical um sniffer dog. Mm-hmm. Like the Queenie leaves behind something of Tina's, they sniff it, Tina was here, what's that? There was someone else. There was someone else with her. Take her. Take me to him. And then the the beast throws him off, and he comically goes and he grabs Jacob's hand. And this beast is chasing them around Paris, and we see Paris because there are parts of Paris here that just look like New York in the last movie. Okay, we we see Paris, and it's great. And then they take him to the aura. They take him to that. Well, he's not an aura. He's a spot. Whatever. They take him to that guy. You that, know the other was strange. The other strange brother. Yeah, give, give us a bit of give, give us a bit of 
Fantastic Beasts in our Fantastic Beast movie. Do that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, while we're on the subject a, of uh, characters, Chris, I've got one for you. Because we're is it out. is? Can I guess? Can I predict it? Go on. Nagini's now a woman. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't gonna. That was that. That wasn't. That is on my list, but it's. It wasn't what I was gonna go for. But yeah, let's do that. Um. Okay. So I just uh, maledictus is a real thing, right? And I don't mean a real thing. I mean it's like a. It's like a. An actual you know belief like a like a mythical creature that is like some cultures like have built into their sort of like belief system or not even belief system that sound makes right. it sound like they think it's real but like it's a maledictus is a real curse that exists outside of the is, world of harry potter does that make this sense this is the notion that a person will 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 be able to turn into an animal and gradually turn permanently into that animal Right. The more they 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 do it, the, the 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 more it sticks until eventually they are engulfed by it. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So maledictus yeah. as a premise is I'm fine with using a maledictus, and I'm even and this will be controversial because I know a lot of people didn't like this. I don't even mind that it's Nagini. I genuinely don't. I think that's fine. Do something with it. She has, and I shit you not, Chris, five lines in the movie. Yeah, but also five lines where she's very much, and as I can, as far as I can tell from the trailer for the next one, remains a good guy. <laughs> like, you know, right? Yeah. So, it's it's Nagini for the sake. Of, unless there's a grand plan to turn Nagini evil, it's Nagini for the sake of it. Or maybe like a wizard screws her over, and and no, no, it would have to be a, a, a muggle that screwed her over. But I don't know something that makes her that makes you go, oh. That is why that character then, you know, found Voldemort. But that's that ain't that ain't this. <laughs> like it's mm-hmm. it's Nagini for the sake of it. Why could just be a snake? Like what's what's happening here, people? May like I say, maybe there's a well. I doubt we'll get to see it now. But maybe there was a grand plan for that. But yeah, it's just it's a it is another character in an already bloated film. Yeah, and that that kind of is the issue isn't it it's like she's one character extra she doesn't add anything to anything she raises more questions than it solves Uh, unless she's just kind of famous snake lady and voldemort later names a separate snake after her is that possible uh we think that's an an answer that like a make this make more sense if we're talking about her motives, because you're right, morally speaking, she seems to be good mostly in this, right? I mean, she cares for credence. Actually, wait, at the end, does she go through the the blue flames? No, she's still with the good guys, isn't she? I think. I don't remember. This is this is that's that's not good. I should remember, but I don't. I'm gonna watch. I'm gonna find out. Let's see. Let's see. Mm, End of the movie. Uh, There's there's, there's Grindy doing his big circle of magic fire. Um, uh, This is them at the in the graveyard. Yeah, yeah. She's 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 with the guy. Good guys. She doesn't she doesn't go through the flame. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I guess the only (laughs) way you can try and make that make sense is by saying that she didn't like that, that, that that maybe she's just like kind of like a famous snake lady so that name is famously because like in the, you know in the first book Harry names Hedwig after a famous wizard right that you found no I, I, well, I, I, I would suspect there's a plan to turn that character evil um, but over the next two movies if we were going to get them but yeah well th- three technically because it's supposed to be five total right and this is two so there's technically supposed to be three movies left Oh yeah, yeah. I'm just assuming because she's. I know she's with the good guys in the sequel from the trailer. So mm-hmm. yeah, I just yeah. I guess I just assumed it didn't happen in three, but it could do. Yeah, you're right. Mm. What was what was your character thing going to be? Oh, I wanted to ask you about. I mean, let's be honest. The most interesting new character introduced in this, certainly the most impactful to the story. Um, let's let's talk about Bunty. Remember Bunty, Chris? <laughs> no. Do you have any thoughts about Bunty? Bunty? Uh, yes, what is Bunty? Bunty, you know, the, the new character they introduced in this movie, Bunty. Yeah, I don't, I don't, how long are we going to stay in this bit for? I can't remember Bunty. <laughs> you can't remember Bunty? Mm, mm, yeah. Not shocking. She's in the first act of the movie, barely. She's Newt's assistant. Um, yet another character. Oh, Bunty! The... 
Another, yeah, oh yeah, Bonty, that Bonty. Oh, I thought you were talking well, about a different Bonty. Um, <laughs> I say that because because when I saw the trailer for the for the next one, I was like, they take the assistant along for the adventure. Like, <laughs> was she just like really popular with fans of this movie? Like, did people really like her character? We'll cover um, it next week. But just on the basis of this movie, I, what's the point of Bonty? Really? It was fun, I guess. It was it was a fun scene, but it, it well, Bunty. It feels like Bunty exists to make Newt seem really sexy and desirable. <laughs> like you know, and I laugh. <laughs> I laughed at you know why don't you take off your shirt? But it just yeah. feels like that's the purpose of the character, which I'm a bit uncomfortable with. <laughs> like, yes, especially when we then. Because, you know, maybe she... It, that's the thing. It feels like her and Jacob exist to make the faces to represent the audience. And it feels like, in that scene, she exists to be the one looking at the beast in wonder and be looking at looking at how amazing Newt is with the beast in wonder. Yeah, she's, she's Jacob need... in the equivalent scene from the previous movie. Yeah, and then and then and then it just becomes Jacob, and she disappears from the movie. Um, but we don't need that, J.K. We don't. We I don't think we need an audience proxy at, at this point for beasts, or indeed magic, because Jacob continues to be an audience proxy for magic. But you know what? You're ten movies in now. People are very familiar with the Harry Potter world. I I don't think you need that on screen it should just literally be the audience and it feels like she's there to do that it feels it feels like she's there to 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 make you believe the cgi more by being the one to go oh, wow <laughs> mm. yeah yeah oh bunty she is like oh the, bunty. the best example of like too many characters that don't do anything or add anything <laughs> yeah yeah, for sure. Let's, let's, do, we, do we talk about Travers? He's 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 with the ministry, you think? But for some reason, like that, we never bother explaining. Newt doesn't like him. Like he shows up, Newt's all like, "Oh, he's here. Why is he here? I'm out." And then 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 it turns out he's working with Grindelwald, I guess. And he has that weird scene where he k- kills that lady and pisses off Credence to I don't know test Credence. And then he dies, doesn't he? He does die. Then does he die then? No, because he, he makes a bubble. He makes a bubble. Which, by the way, if the obscurity... So does he, the... just then disa- does he just then disappear from the yeah, rest of it? Yeah, he just disappears. I don't, I don't... I think he's... No, I think we see him... Do we not see him with Grindelwald later? God, is that his last remember, scene in the that... movie? Fuck, I can't remember either. Again, that character felt like it had. he had three or four missing scenes. <laughs> Right, this is what I'm saying. There's just tons of characters like this. Like, who's the fucking person Nicholas Flamel talks to in the book? Oh, who is that person? I wondered that. Like, what's going on there? Like, you can freeze it and find out the name because the name is written underneath. But, like, I, I don't mean who is that person in terms him. of, like, what's their name and identity. Like, who is that person to him? Who is that person to this plot? Who is that person to this movie? Like, what is their purpose? Him. Hit the or that aura guy. I can't even remember. Isn't it Travis? Did you say? I think it's and, Travers. And flip because I think he's, he's supposed the... to be. He's Travers is supposed to be a descendant of. Uh, there's a Travers in the in the Harry Potter books. That's like a. That's like he's in the Ministry, but he's actually secretly a Death Eater. Right. Okay. So this is well, supposed to be. It's uh, one of his. One of his descendants, I guess. Those two characters are the worst. For it feels like we're missing a couple of scenes here, guys. <laughs> Because kind of you don't get that much time with his Newt's brother either, but you do understand that one. Like essentially, he stole his girl. Like fine, I get it. That makes sense. I'm I'm with you. And I think actually, you know, the the bonding of them at the end is quite nice. Like the, him comforting him and and that you know kind of works. But some of the other characters, you know, the henchmen that help Grindelwald throughout. You, we don't really yeah, that, go into... that random lady that's always with him, holding the skull. Yeah, and the, and and the dude that visits, and and there's a creature there actually in the escape, isn't there? But even that, I'm like, so when when did these two swap roles, and how, and oh, it's so muddled, man. So I've got it up, Chris. <sighs> Professor Ellery Hicks. 
that's what is the, the woman in the in the book. I think I'm reading it right. It's quite hard to read yeah. in the version I've got. Um, I've, I've tried to I've tried to zoom in on it, and it's not. Um, can I not just wait? What playback? Zoom. Yeah, I think it's Professor L. It's something like Ellery Hicks. I can't quite read the first name exactly, but it's something in that region. Who is that? Do we? Should I know who that is? I'm googling it now. I'm googling who is the woman in the book talking to Nicholas Flamel. Got a Wikipedia entry on Harry Potter Wiki. And is it Ellery Hicks? Am I, am I getting the name right? She. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Ellery she, Lally Hicks. She's a charms professor at the American school, Ivor Harmy. Oh, Ilvermorny. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Cool. There's a, Jesus, there's a whole, like, entry about her. Where did all this information come from? Oh, right, right, right. Oh, Christ. Okay, yeah, she's in, she's in a bunch of secrets of Dumbledore. <laughs> oh, is she? Oh, right, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's why there's so much information about her then. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. I say a bunch, you know. <laughs> enough that enough that the secrets of Dumbledore, you know, cast posters, she gets one. <laughs> Okay, right, fine, fair enough. Um, not fair enough, though, because yeah, in but, this movie, but, what is she? She's nothing. Yeah. Why is she in, in the movie? In this movie, it's not explained. In this movie, it's not explained at all. And I just think the movie has to stand on its own. It can't just be like... Like, so after this movie, right, came out, my big question, my big question, it's a question I should have had after the previous one, but it was very, very evident here, right, because at the beginning of the movie, they drag Newt in. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I've run out of drink as well. That's awkward. I really need to drink some water. But, oh well. <clears throat> that was a horrible cough. <coughs> oh. At the beginning of this movie, they bring in Newt, and they're all like, we need you, Newt. We need you to join the ministry. Help us out. Help us figure out this Grindelwald thing. Which, first of all, he's a fucking zoologist. I, I don't know why you're so interested in getting him on as an aura. I don't. <laughs> well, I think it was the the relationship with Credence more at the beginning of this movie. That's that was the thing they were they were anchoring that on. Okay, fine. I'll bite that. I'll bu- I'll, I'll buy that. I'll bite. <clears throat> next I'll bu- next time next time I've got a point that will last a few minutes. I'll let you know so you can go top up your water. By the way, yeah, I'm I'm dying. This is. <coughs> I think whatever's gotten whatever's agitated my throat's gotten like caught there. Ah, uh. <coughs> why don't you just go get some water now? I'll finish this point. I'll finish this point. Um. Because when I say this, I want your thoughts on it. Uh, so they bring him in. They're all like, we want you to join the ministry, be an aura. And he's not interested, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, you're the best, Snoop. We want you, we want blah, blah, blah. All that jazz. And I'm, all I'm thinking the whole time is, he was expelled from Hogwarts, wasn't he? Didn't they say that in the last movie? And then I dug deeper yeah. into that thought. and went, wait a minute. Why does he even have a wand? Don't they come snap you wand if you get expelled by Hogwarts? You're not allowed to take part in magical society in the same way anymore. Look at Hagrid. What's the deal? Well, not only is Newt a part of, of the magical community, but he's a fucking he's a. But he's they're, 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 they want him to be a fucking aura. Right, Did Dumbledore protect? I'm wondering. I'm I'm looking up now whether Dumbledore because there was obviously that line. About uh, Dumbledore protecting him. Uh, New- oh yeah, uh, here you go. So Newt is still expelled, but allowed to keep his wand because of Dumbledore's influence, is what the Wikipedia says. And I think what is indicated in that uh, dialogue between Colin Farrell and uh, and Eddie Redmay in the in the first film. So that's that's why I think the. The aura angle is you 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 know credence you caught you caught before a um that thing that credence is and I'm aware I've said his name like three different ways in one thing um, but the the uh, I can't remember the name of it but that you know that the the monster um he becomes yeah. he's already the caught obs- one the of them the obscurus. So, the obscurus. so I think he's got experience with this boy he's caught an obscurist. That's why they're saying, look, come along with, on this journey with us. Well, so that's interesting because I've got in the trivia and the reason I was bringing this up when I brought it up is we were talking about JK setting up stuff for future movies. Mm. One second. I've got it in here. Um, 
Yeah, Newt Scamander carries a wand and practices magic and works at the ministry. Uh, oh, and works for the ministry, which isn't true. That's whoever's written this is an idiot. Um, even though he was expelled from Hogwarts, which puzzled several fans following this movie's release, especially since Hagrid wasn't allowed those liberties. J.K. Rowling has explained in an interview that there is a reason for this, and it will be revealed throughout the series. Oh. I thought it was just the influence of Dumbledore. See, that again just smacks of hinting and trying to put, like, there's a history between Newt and Dumbledore, and we don't need it to be explored. (laughs) I'm sure it'll be convoluted. Yeah. And I think as well, looking at the way this is, like, laid out, like, according... (laughs) So this is also my trivia. According to the screenplay for Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, Lita Lestrange was conducting an experiment at Hogwarts which went wrong and endangered the life of a student. Newt Scamander took the blame and the other professors threatened to expel him from Hogwarts. Dumbledore stood up for him, so he was never expelled and is listed as a graduate. But they literally said he was expelled, so they changed that at some point. But I'm wondering if maybe this thing she's going to reveal later on is something to do with that. Like Newt protected Lita and got himself kind of expelled, but only half expelled because then Dumbledore you know, explained that was the situation. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. I mean, Dumbledore has got quite a lot of power for someone seemingly. Because that's the other thing this movie tries to do, isn't it, with Dumbledore? Like, you're the only one that can beat him. Da, 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 da. And it's like, uh, yeah, he's quite a young teacher. Is it because they know that they know he was friends? Like, what's Dumbledore been through at this point? I know he's been through all the family stuff, but, you know, they treat Dumbledore like he's got the reputation he's got in the Harry Potter series so in this film. Fucking on the nose. It's so bad. He's the best teacher we've got. Thanks, McLagan. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck me. Like, this movie is about as subtle as a punch in the face. Like, what the fuck is this movie doing? Like, yeah, uh, there's a lot. Gross. There's a lot of moments like that. Like, shall we talk about the clip you sent me? <laughs> oh, it's so good. It's though. London. It's so good. I've always wanted to go here. <laughs> Yeah, so for those who don't remember, one of my the, well, my favorite joke in the movie, it's the best part of the movie. It's Jacob comes out of his trance that Queenie's had him in, and he doesn't know where he is or how he got there. So he turns to do it, and he's like, "Where am I?" And Newt's, uh, Newt's like, "Oh, well, you're you're in London." He's like, and he's still he's mad that he's been dragged there and hasn't gotten to enjoy it yet. So as he's leaving the room, <laughs> he just goes, "I've always wanted to go here." <laughs> like really mad as he walks out. <laughs> It's such a great you. delivery and, uh, and and line. It's just it's, everything about that is so good that like it's the it's like standout moment of the movie, which is embarrassing because like there should be more than that. But I said it to no, Chris I, yesterday because it's such a good fucking moment. No, nah, I think in terms of standout moments, it's those credits finally coming. But the <laughs> the question. <laughs> The question I have for you, Dad. Let's do it. Yeah. Let's before we do before we do triv and check for for other notes. Let's let's tackle. Oh boy, credences of Dumbledore. Mm. Yes, because yes. I feel like even the movie you talk about ham fisted the fucking Phoenix thing. It's just like it's almost like J.K.'s going. People are going to be so fucking confused and bemused by this that I'm not even sure they're going to get it from the dialogue. So let's let's have let's have him literally call him Dumbledore, and let's have a phoenix go to him. <laughs> yeah, and I wonder what because it doesn't. It, it, it's unclear in this movie if Albus has a phoenix because he sort of talks about it vaguely, right? Like, oh, it's said a phoenix might appear to a Dumbledore in a way I've that got a feeling of... he didn't have one. Right, that's yeah. yeah. This is what I was getting at. I, I'm not sure Dumbledore currently has a phoenix, so I'm wondering if this phoenix that's just come to credence is Forks, <sighs> and Dumbledore somehow inherits him throughout the course. Yeah, it's just that classic prequel thing, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Like, it's that classic. How did Han Solo get the dice? How did Dumbledore get Forks? I don't know. Is there no mystery left in the world? Who gives a shit? <laughs> agreed. 100% you know? agreed. Yeah. I, I don't know. Um, this, yeah. So, I mean, this is the thing, right? Like, the, the, the movie is all about his heritage. And then the reveal is just so deeply unsatisfying because you just sort of go, okay, then fine. But what? Why? What? So, it's not. So, we talked about this a lot when we reviewed. This can be a bit weird, Paul. But we reviewed Arcane, right? And we talked about there's a choice made in the, the last episode. It's kind of almost the cliffhanger the show leaves off on. 
where a character basically pulls the trigger on something and you immediately go, oh shit, because you understand the ramifications of the choice that's just been made. The impact that's going to have on the drama and the characters and the situations going into season two of Arcane, right? You just, you understand that the this is going to dramatically shift the world. At the very least for our core characters, but if not, it'll have reverberations through literally the whole world, right? This reveal, you just go, okay, and? Because there is no, there's no part of me that goes, okay, he happens to have heritage relating to Dumbledore. What does that change about anything? What does well, that? Uh, unfortunately, it cha- It lessens. It, you know, we have. It's not just hypervol in the. De- now I haven't got to this part of the Deathly Hallows yet on my reread, but it's not like the whole backstory uh, about the sister and stuff. Well, I suppose if this happens after, but it just, it just, it just, it lessens all of that. I'm sorry, it does because you just go, why didn't this come up then? But wait, no, like, but wait. He doesn't. Because... He doesn't necessarily. He's not necessarily Dumbledore's direct brother, though, is he? Our Dumbledore is not the same as being brother to or re- directly related to Albus. Right, yeah. Dumbledore, okay. Dumbledore's dad could have a brother that also had a son. Would have been called yeah, Dumbledore. true. He could be a cousin. It just feels cheap, doesn't it? It just feels like, how can I make this matter? Ah, I know. He's a Dumbledore. Right, but, it, but my point is, if that's the thinking, how stupid can you be? Because it doesn't matter. So what? He has yeah, the yeah. same surname. Yeah. It doesn't change anything. It doesn't raise the stakes. It doesn't do anything well, at it's, all. Well, the movies... I don't, I'm not saying it's doing this well, but the movie's attempt at, at it raising the stakes is this means that Grindelwald could use him to attack Dumbledore. Although, arguably, you could argue he what? could do that with anyone. <laughs> Anything or anyone. Yeah, exactly. So it doesn't raise the stakes at all. I yeah. mean, and we've also, and we've just proven, I'm not, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to harp on this point too too much, but that Travers guy earlier in the movie, he, he literally hurts Credence in the most direct way he could, right? He, 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 he literally kills the woman that might have the answers to his heritage. The one thing Credence wants in this movie is to know where he came from, right? And that woman knows... And the ministry dude shows up and basically murders her to test Credence's Obscurai powers, right? And then Credence goes Obscurus and he just makes a bubble and Credence can't crack it. And then the guy apparates. <laughs> yeah. My yeah. thinking is, how is this a threat to Dumbledore? Because if this fucking clown Travers <laughs> from the ministry can simply create a bubble that protects him from Credence oh, in his sake. strong Obscurus form... Then that's not a threat to fucking also, anyone, is it? Well, also, how is it a threat to, to, to Dumbledore? I'll tell you how it's not a threat to Dumbledore, Dan. Do you want me to tell you how? We right. know Dumbledore survives. <laughs> well, yeah, that too. But I'm just saying, like, even it's, from a perspective where... It's, let's, just, let's just say I'm I'm, I'm guy that's never seen Harry Potter, right? I've never read a book. I've never seen the movies. And you sit me down to watch these Fantastic Beast movies. This is my introduction to the world of Harry Potter. And I'm going, first movie, yeah, this Obscura seems really dangerous. Second movie starts, we want to use him to attack Dumbledore. I'm going, yeah, yeah, that would probably, that, that'd be, yeah, there's a chance that would work. Like, this Obscurus is very powerful. Tore apart a whole city in the last movie. Then, <laughs> some fucking mug from the Ministry sets him off and then just stands there with a shield around him. And you go, oh, all right, it's a threat to buildings then. A nice particle effect will occur, but it doesn't actually... Yeah, you're giving it... You, you can't, because there's you, no way Dumbledore not, they, can't conjure the same fucking bubble shield this guy just did. Because <laughs> Dumbledore, that's not what that's not that's not what person you're giving it too much, Dan. Because you're, you're you're implanting too much knowledge. That's not what person who's never seen the Harry Potter movies is thinking. This is how far that goes. Oh, he wants to use it to kill Dumbledore. Oh, is Dumbledore a threat? Is he? Because I've only seen him evaporate over London. <laughs> yeah yeah that's true yeah. <laughs> no but but also the movies had like four different lines where people have told me how great Dumbledore is so well that's true that's true it's but my not, point is it's like, not a threat the, to the, the Obscurus doesn't seem like a threat to anyone in this after this movie a, 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 a threat to muggles maybe but like if a wizard could just make a big bubble around him then I don't really see why this is a threat he's not a threat to Dumbledore because he's not the top of the astronomy tower that's uh <laughs> 
that's why he's that. Yeah, it's yeah. You're right. I mean, yeah. That's, that's lots of flaws, isn't there? <laughs> yeah, it's the whole thing. Just doesn't really know, make a not, huge amount of sense. We've not talked about Tina. Some nice newt moments, but fundamentally, Tina doesn't have a lot to do as a character. We don't even really see the pain of the queenie thing through Tina's eyes. We see it through Jacob's. No. Um, which, which, which would be it, actually, I think, a really good way to do it. What see it through Tina's eyes? Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 for sure. But don't worry, Chris. Or, you'll, you'll get or, a lot or, less of Tina and, in the next movie, so don't worry about it. <laughs> and I, and I know, I know, we've had, I know, I know we. I know we know that Tina's going to be go on to marry Newt, although you'd have to be fairly deep into Harry Potter lore to know that. But would it make more sense if it's Tina that goes over? I don't know. I don't know. No, because she's an aura and good and all of that stuff. You just need to you just need to make the queenie thing work a bit more. Like it's really dark, but I didn't say it earlier, but when we were talking about it, it's it's really dark and it's a bold move, but you could have queenie go. I've I've seen the thoughts of man, <laughs> of non-magical men, and with the exception of you, Jacob, most of them are dickheads, and I can see how this war thing could happen. So, do you know mm. what I mean? There's, I think you just drill into it a bit more with Queenie, maybe. Yeah, yeah, I it's think it's a so. bold move to say to the audience, <laughs> all, all, all non-magic people are. <laughs> A, a, a shit. Although you know, mankind. Well, I, would I mean, he, what is he? He, descri- he describes <laughs> them few, as like we got a few rogans. He, well, uh, he de- he describes mankind as being like power hungry and greedy and like, and that's the thing is they're trying to do that thing where like, oh, the villain's not he's not wrong, is he? Like, there are a lot of men that feel yeah. that way. You know, there's a lot of mankind that is like that. I mean, men mostly, but um, you know, uh, it, it's it, you know, oh, it's it's potentially a real problem. But like, you just don't buy it because like, it's it's. It's just not enough to for Queenie. Like they they just not it, done enough to justify it at all. It, it also crosses. It, it also feels like J.K.'s doing that thing where she's going. Well, okay. If this is set before the war, mm-hmm. we have to we have to explain what happened with wizards and muggles and what the wizards part of the of the war was. And it's like you you don't JK like it's a it's a fictional world you you set the rules <laughs> for all we know in in your world and maybe she's trying to keep you know play on the notion of this is the this is a, you know make people make kids believe it more by it being like oh this is actually a thing or something like that but like. I don't think you, you're choosing to create this problem for yourself, and you know the the what 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 was going on with the wizarding world during the during World War um, Two. Two. Mm-hmm. Like you're creating that, I think. Right, because I I'm quite happy to live in a world where maybe the the the, the, the Muggle World Wars don't happen, or wizards yeah. just didn't even know it happened. Like just full stop. Because somebody brought up a, a point recently about the fact... Uh, this is a really interesting observation, actually. If JK is saying Hermione could or maybe could not be a person of colour, it doesn't matter, whatever, which I'm, that makes sense and fine with. If she is a person of colour, so if Hermione happens to be black, does that not inform her thoughts on spew? Muggle history of slavery yeah. around, right? And my response to well, that was, yeah, but in but in the wizarding world, they don't have a frame of reference for a dentist, so I don't think they're going to know about Mughal history with that. So I I don't know how she would necessarily that would necessarily come up in the story, if all that happened at all. It it would inform, I think, it, rather than spew the mud blood of it all, it would inform that more her reaction to that i, I, I think didn't even think of would, that yeah you're right that would that would inform that more than um than i think the spew stuff and the uh, you know if if that character has grown up dealing with racism um and the the you know half blood mud blood stuff is is a is a form of wizarding um you know it's, it's got similar themes um then which sounds lighter than i mean it i think it would inform that stuff that angle more because I hate the I I think I think Hermione, any any of these characters can can be black. And the argument against the the the, the I've not I've not delved into it because it's just such a fucking 
nonsense issues to me issue to me but whenever i've seen people go they categorically said look and in the passage i've seen referenced of hermione's pale face is when the character is scared so that you know so and so goes pale could just be a description mm. of someone being scared any of these characters can be any color it's fucking ridiculous like it really is agreed but but but, my, but, I get, but because, going back but to the I point think... of like how the muggle well, the, the best thing to do is never reference it uh, because it opens a whole can of worms. Yeah. Think of the can of worms we just went into thinking about the implications of if the slave trade still existed in the muggle world. Yeah, yeah. And Hermione is indeed a person of color. Then that's a can of worms that these kids books just aren't prepared to go into. And I think that's fine. I don't think a kids book necessarily needs to tackle that stuff because it's there for the taking. I, I think it's absolutely fine for a kids book to go, no, that's too dark for what we're doing. We're telling a silly story like set in the wizarding world and it's like, you know, it's magic and like stuff. And we're, we're going to tackle themes of intolerance, but we're not necessarily going to go into the real world of it all. Because cause that's, well, I guess that's always the issue, isn't it? When you set a, a, a magical or fantasy world alongside the real world. Because in, 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 usually you, you, you touch upon real world ideas through allegory. But the problem is mug, the muggle world is, in theory, ours therefore has our history and therefore you create those problems so the best thing to do is just not draw parallels let people think that maybe the muggle world in the harry potter books is a fictional version of the muggle world where maybe things like the slave trade or world war ii didn't fucking happen and yeah here we are now with jacob being like god not another war which is really very powerfully delivered line or you know whatever i can't remember what he says but it's really well delivered and a really good way as well to hit the impact of the fact that Grindelwald has for somehow foreseen World War Two and the the, the the atom bomb, but like Christ, just <laughs> yeah, because there's, that there's is, references that that toothpaste ain't going back in that tube. This starts and on the spew thing. I think spew spew is meant to represent that there is still injustice and um, problems within the wizarding world, which yeah. I think you know makes sense. Uh, the um, they reference it, and they say, this starts in the first of these movies, doesn't it? Didn't New and Jacob go off and fight? Or they certainly have a discussion of, you were in the war, you went to fight, or something like that? Did um, they? I think so. Oh, no. Jake, wrong. no. Yeah, you, 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 you know what I've remembered. You're right. It, it's not that Newt went to fight, but Jacob assumes that Newt did when he first no, meets him, to, and he thinks he's a... Accor- he, go on. According to Wikipedia, although this the reference for this is an article, 15 Things You Didn't Know About Newt Scamander, so whether this is in the text or comes from an interview or something, uh, around 1914 to 1918, Newt serves on the Eastern Front during the First World War in a confidential Ministry of Magic program invo- invoking Ukrainian iron belly dragons. Where do you start with that? This is what I mean. Yeah, Why I would you open that can of worms? It's so insane. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Oh, to be fair. In the be- Oh, wow. So I've opened up the, the transcript for the first movie and I've just, you know, control F and put the word war in because I'm a dummy and I don't really, I'm not very precise about these things. But I found a bit earlier in the movie, in the first one, when someone says, um, you know, where is this man? Scamander? Uh, oh, you mean the- uh, Th- Theseus Scamander, the war hero? No, this is his yeah, little brother. See, did... Yeah, World War One is embedded into the first film, yeah. Yeah. But again, I but I think it's I think it's, you know, we've 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 proved it with the rabbit hole we've gone down in various different ways over the last twenty minutes. I just think it's cleaner if you just avoid that part of history. But then I don't get No, it's it, it is in the real script. Thing. No, sorry, just to, I, just because we said we don't know if it's in a few you fought in the war? Of course I fought in the war. Everyone fought in the war. You didn't fight in the war? I worked mostly with dragons. Yeah, there you go. So it's in the script. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in a very vague, not you know, not specific way, but it's there. That is there. The... I can't remember what I was going to say now. Sorry, buddy. Yeah, <laughs> oh, just a, just, a, just a real bugbear. This isn't relevant to anything, but it's just a bugbear of mine when you get like... When Harry Potter fans get so pedantic over the fact that essentially that it's it, it 
it's it's it, it, apparently it's set well and then jk browning has set this it's so pedantic about the fact that it's set in the like 90s or like the early 90s or like you know it's it's set much earlier than the books came mm-hmm. out and i'm just like guys there's nothing in the text that you know what i mean it's not like this not like on the way into london to get to board the hogwarts express the radio's listening to wonderwall like <laughs> there's, there's there's nothing this isn't something that we need to get too protective over just because at some point rowling has stated the years <laughs> like, the, 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 the years are in the books too like because they have like uh, gravestones with with dates on that are in the books and you you could if you add up the ages then are they uh, cool. yeah so the the, the, <laughs> the, the years are in the books physically like it's not but i agree with you they, they if you wanted to do a version of Harry Potter. If someone was doing, let's say we're talking 10 years time or whatever, and it's that, why I said earlier, they're doing a reboot of the Harry Potter franchise in movie form, and they're bringing Jude Law in as new Dumbledore, new old Dumbledore, <laughs> um, and, you know, doing all that, and they happen to go, oh, it's modern day. I don't think it matters. <laughs> it's fine. Because no. the 90s of all no, is never a part of the story. That is That happens to be when they are factually set. But then that the, the fact that they're in the '90s is never relevant to the story, so you can set it whenever; doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. Although sure. I did find a weird you... inconsistency the other day when I because I've started rereading it now, Chris, and because uh, nice. I finished I finished Lord of the Rings books. By the way, stand by many of my thoughts on Lord of the Rings books. Too long and too much. The scrifty froth from the from the from the realm of scrifty bubble went to the schmoth and flower in year twenty six bajillion. Uh, just too much, too much inconsequential spouting of exposition in those books compared to the Hobbit one. Just saying, Hobbit book is really clean, and all the exposition you get is about the Hobbit and stuff that's happening in the Hobbit. Lord of the Rings books like keep finding excuses to have people bang on about all sorts of shit that didn't happen. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, I also don't need fucking massive descriptions of fields. I know what a field looks like. Thank you, Just Tolkien. Fair enough. <laughs> anyway, um, but I've, I've reread those now. I've started with the Harry Potter ones again, and um, I found a little inconsistency. Chris, would you like to hear about my inconsistency? I would love to, Dan. So, in the Harry Potter books, it's it's stated at least I think twice that Muggle technology doesn't really work at Hogwarts. If you bring in a wristwatch or you know a radio or whatever, ain't gonna work. You know, if you want to listen to the radio, you got to bring a wizard's wireless. Yeah. In Azkaban, mm-hmm. they have a scene where Harry's getting up early to do Quidditch practice because Wood's working him pretty hard and he turns off his alarm clock. You got oh, an alarm yeah. clock, Harry? You got a digital alarm clock going on there? What you, what you got? What you got, Harry? I reckon it's a wizarding alarm clock. He, he you know, smashed a, a chattering model bird or something. <laughs> I mean, if, it, if that is it, it ain't in the book. Yeah. How quickly did you get power through the first two if you're already on Azkaban? Oh, the first two are really short. Read them in like a couple hours. Oh, yeah, true. First two are super true. short. Um, okay. I wish I could find the chapter quickly so, so I could read how it's phrased, but I can't. Anyway, yes. So Should much we... so, I'll I'd, I'd tell you an annoyance before, you know, unless you've got any other notes. I do, I do have some like of the quick notes to... To, to flick through, but yeah, I'll try and be quick with those. And so I t- just before a little a little irritation on my part. So my my copies of the books, like the later, I really wish I had done what I did for Order and Goblet, which was to then buy the paperbacks. Like I love those chil- the original children's book UK covers. I think they're brilliant. I love the font. There's so much nostalgia in the font for me. But um, I only the uh, Half Blood Prince and um, Deathly Hallows. I I've just got hardback copies i never then you know bought them in paper book and sort of paperback and sort of had a complete set so they're old they've been read multiple times so i was like i'm gonna get i'm just gonna get the new box set and and read these the font's different i found i've i found that really hard to get on board with i know that sounds so stupid but like part the font of that of the text the sa- in the book the font of the text in the books is different. oh not just the and front know not that- the front cover yeah, no, not the front cover, but I, but there's there's something even more egregious, which I'll tell you about in a sec. Um, yeah, the font just the, the font's part of the nostalgia for me. I know that sounds stupid, but you know what I mean. Like those memories coming flooding back of reading the books of old, are, are partly to do with you know reading um, reading that font. And yeah, anyway. Um, so not only and also I'm. It sounds really weird, but when I read a book. 
we're potentially about to go down a really big rabbit hole if you think this is nuts but hopefully you'll go yeah i know what you mean and we, we can move on the front cover of a book is really like subconsciously in my mind when i read the book order of the phoenix feels like a a, a yellow book to me a half blood prince feels green and because those and it's the same with any book series i really like and actually sometimes with films and and dvd covers or posters like the yeah, does that make sense, or is that weird? I, no, I, I I know what you mean. You're 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 sort of a, it's like um it's like sometimes when a piece of music will take you back to a real specific time and place. Like uh, it's sometimes yeah. like when something is nostalgic, it's nostalgic in ways that don't often make sense. It's colors and feelings and thoughts that like don't necessarily aren't specific, but like yeah, work that way. I don't yeah yeah I I don't so, particularly feel that way about like oh I'm reading Harry Potter. This one's this one's a purple. It feels purple, but I I know where that's coming from. So I'm not gonna call you a crazy person <laughs> yeah so i really i i so basically the the new the new basically what i'm saying is the the box set of the new v- versions which i've got is really is i'm really struggling to like feel the same way for multiple reasons when reading them but one really cheeky thing is the first three books have a bigger font than the rest of the books in the in the box set because i'm looking at the books going it's weird. There's not as much of a discrepancy between the sizes as oh, wow. there was originally. Like the difference That's... between uh, order mm. and philosophers isn't that much. And when I flick through them, it's because the first three books have a bigger font, and then they switch to a smaller font for the latter four. So yeah, it's nuts. Anyway, weird. Uh, and Dan, I think I think everyone will agree. Irrelevant to the discussion. So, have you got any other notes from Crimes of Grindelwald to get us? Uh, uh, yeah, I got, I got a few. Um, I like the idea that like Grindelwald kept convincing people to like try and let him out, so they cut out his tongue. I think that's pretty fun. We haven't talked about the opening sequence. I think the opening sequence is fine. Um, I don't think the stakes are massively clear in the opening scene because there's a part of me that goes Grindelwald is clearly out. So, like. There's a part of me that wonders why he even bothers going back, but I guess it's because he wants the blood oath thing, right? Because that's on the that's in the that's that's on the carriage thing that's being pulled by Thestrals. But yeah, it's it's a, it's a reasonably innovative opening. But on that subject, visually, this movie, uh, we're 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 mixed back again. Sorry, um, I don't know what happened. We, Yates just gave up again, or he got too overworked doing this movie straight after the last one. I don't know, but there's some real muddy greeny gray black nonsense imagery yeah. there's also some good well, imagery in this movie like i think that 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 um the bigger cat the big lion thing I, I i don't know that creature's name off the top of my head but um that's a really cool visual and i think it's a pretty decent special effect like when it's like hugging newt like it, it that works really well but i don't think this movie particularly chooses interesting camera angles i don't think it's the most visually uh, yeah it's a it's a bit muddy again it's, it's sort of falling standards after the last one which i thought on was visually the, quite good on the colors point i i i touched upon it in a sentence earlier and we did just to kind of reiterate it again because it's relevant here if part of the charm of these books is gonna be or these films sorry is gonna be we go to a different location each time and explore magic there one you need to actually explore magic there and two You've just visually made the area, you know, France look like America looked in the last movie. Mm-hmm. Like you could take shots from both of those movies, strap them together, and it wouldn't particularly feel like we were in different locations. No, I agree. And I also like there's not enough, not enough French people. Like, where are the French people? Like in the last movie, we met a bunch of really yeah. interesting, very New York characters. Like that, um, like that guy played by Ron Perlman. You know, the, the, that sort of like, uh, I think he's like an elf or a goblin or whatever he was, you know, that's all like, you know, I'm from New York. What do you want from me? You know, the house elf that was all New York. You know, ain't you ever seen a house elf before? You know, I, I, that, great. It's, it's weird 20s New York wizards. I'm, I'm into that. That's, I, I, more of that, please. I, there's no reason for this movie to be set in Paris. To the point when loads of the characters that were in England show up later in France and they never address that they got there. And you'd be forgiven for just like thinking this is all in England. Yeah, like, for sure. Like they're just they're just there. Also, if we're doing if we're doing oh Newt's been like banned from traveling, put those cuffs on him. Those cuffs that let you track his every move. Mm. 
Because how do you sure. enforce that otherwise? I don't, like as the movie proves, he just well, goes... no. When there's dodgy port key dealers about, you can't. <laughs> Which I actually don't mind as an idea because, like, the idea no, that the, the, the ministry control the port keys actually goes some way to covering the complaint I had in the last movie about why they didn't just stick the visibility cloak on Harry and like take him to a port key somewhere, an illegal one. I mean, it doesn't stop the complaint of why yeah, did they just shove does... him on the underground, but the. <laughs> It does also slightly bugger up Deathly Hallows because they can't they can't take Harry out of Pivot Drive with a port key, but they can take him to Tonk's parents where he will then port key to the burrow. <laughs> like, oh shit, weird. yeah. Well so in the movie he just goes straight to the burrow. So in the movie that's fine. But Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, so but in the in the, the book and... version you're absolutely right that he does he does then immediately use a port key. So why not Porky yeah. straight out of Privet Drive? Yeah. Oh, anyway, there's too much fast travel in this universe where no one needs fast travel because everyone can operate. <laughs> yeah, and that's the thing. You, you know why they use... And uh, this is the thing. I'm I'm not against it either. I'm not against the Porky thing at all. But what the what upsets me is, you know why that Porky's probably there? Because she didn't want to do the visual of like a boat again mm. or or something like that. Like that. that's why we're using Porky because it's slightly different. Yeah, you know, and it's like a funny get thing Jacob to put, to put get, Jacob through. Do it, do, but actually, hold on. Sorry, sorry to cut you off there. It's, the movie's called Fantastic Beasts. Get him on a Thestral. Like the the UK and France are not that far away. Get That's him a on really a Thestral. Good point. Make it like get a him really a thest- like unpleasant like hour long or two hour long journey in the sky because it, you know, Jake- the flight is only an hour or two in real life. Show, get him on a festival. Not show the wonder and show the ma- uh, and show the magic at, of him being on a festival from Newt's point of view, and then cut to Jacob riding an invisible bird over the ocean. Brilliant! <laughs> like, that would be a really good scene for a Fantastic Beast movie. Yeah, agreed. You've just cracked it. You've cracked it. Ugh. Um. I'm not sure how I felt about Newt's brother and the love thing with Lee Lestrange. I don't know. Like, I wrote notes about this, but I just kind of like, I, does it matter that she's with his brother? Like, it's never done in the plot. Like, they, they barely share a line. It's That's just an excuse for him and Tina to be not on first name terms again, I guess, to reset their relationship because she's calling him Mr. Scamander again at the beginning of the movie. Uh, that doesn't need to be in the movie. Cut that. I don't need it. Yeah, Yeah, for sure. Um, I like Newt being tailed through London and I like Dumbledore's weird little entrance with the glove and I like Newt being all like all the conspi- all the less conspicuous rooftops taken were they um, I think that's kind of fun I like their little little light bantery thing um, yeah they have a good relationship and I like how they introduce Dumbledore in this movie it's fun um, Baby Niffler's cute but pointless why are they in the movie to uh, chuck a beast in the movie. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Um, we've talked about that. We've talked about that. Oh, like, she, he calls her crazy, so she leaves. Sorry, Jacob calls Queenie crazy, so she leaves. But, like, why? Like, she, she he should be mad at her. Like, she, she enchanted him. Like, like, she's the one that leaves angry in that situation. <laughs> I'm going to go see my sister. For that thing the I just whole, did wrong, it's, it's weird. Just take out. I'm, I'm. If I'm, you know, in that weird alternate world where I'm script editor on like on this, I'm take just take all the love potion stuff out. Yeah, take it out. They go, they go to London to speak to Newt because they're arguing about whether they should get married or not, and they think Newt might be able to give some advice. Yeah. And Newt says, and Newt sides with Jacob, and Queenie gets annoyed and fucks off. Yeah. Yeah, they do contrive a lot. And of really presumably, dumb by the way, presumably by the way, evaporates to Paris, which Newt can't do for some reason. But anyway, mm. yeah. Uh, well, Newt can't do because he's under. If he does, he'll get. He get and he gets caught. He gets. He gets put in Azkaban. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair point. Yeah. Um, it just they, they, just they, get that... rid of the love potion. Yeah. There's there's nothing that lessens a romance story less like it, one of the characters being forced well, into it against their will. Well, and then also just like all the contrivances around how they all end up in Paris is ridiculous. Like Newt gets the postcard 
and that's but that's also where Jacob wants to go because instead of going home to her house, uh, Queenie's decided she wants to go see her sister, who two seconds ago she just said she'd fallen out with. Like, this just none of it makes sense. I don't understand. Like, no one's motives in the beginning of this movie make sense. It's all just they're making choices to get them all to France at the same time so they can have an adventure. It's way cleaner if you just say they're all going for credence. You don't need all this yeah, personal sure. nonsense. Uh, I don't know. Uh, let's see. Oh yeah, French Ministry. We get to see it sort of not enough France in this front in this movie, but we do see the inside of the French Ministry. Um, I have I have questions about the insane later on when they try to go to the records room and the lady. She, they're just like I'm. I'm uh, Lita Lestrange, and this is uh, my, my, my husband-to-be. And the lady just doesn't ask for ID. She doesn't ask for anything. They're not even disguised in any way. <laughs> they just like, they just show up and say those names, and she's just like, yeah, I guess, go in. And then another lady shows up and is like, I'm Lita Lestrange. And she doesn't go, huh, <laughs> pretty sure that's who just came through. <laughs> So bad that scene, oh, man. It's, man. It's, I, you know what? Though? Again, I, I like the idea of like wizard storage boxes and then finding hers, but then it gets summoned to her, so they get dragged with it. That that's all fine, and even the visual of all the the columns rotating through the ground and stuff—that's all pretty cool. But yeah, the rest of it. Yeah, yeah, bad. no, it's it's great visually, but it feels like it exists to put an action sequence in and to get fit in some more beasts. Yeah. and and then and then to get them to where they actually need to go they find a note that says, hey, I just read ahead in the script and it turns out we all need to be where Grindelwald is and that's at this graveyard. So if you want to head there, you'll get all the plot answers you want there. This is so contrived. Anyway. Um... I feel, and I feel really disheartened because I, I feel like this is I feel like this is one of my worst, worst performances on one of these podcasts because literally I'm just naming things and getting you to talk about them because because I've only seen it once. And I was so flabbergasted by, oh, this really is bad. Like, this does not function. And that really, really angers me because I couldn't ever comprehend putting anything below Half-Blood Prince. And we're not there yet. But, you know, when the entire movie doesn't function, it's very hard to argue against. I don't like the colours on the screen. Like, it's all a bit, it's all shot like a bit, a bit (laughs) muddy-like. Yeah, I mean that wasn't our only criticism. We did do a three-hour podcast on that one, but yes, been, I, no, yeah, no, no. Yeah. But it's been my main. That's been my main. I'm not going to lie. That I've said many a time. That's my main reason for keeping it at the bottom. Uh, yeah, I especially don't like that, which is extra weird when you think about the fact that I've just viewed it as a green book, and I don't like the fact that it's a green film. But there we go. <laughs> um, I um liked when they reintroduced Hogwarts. They used Hedwig's theme. I'm a sucker for that sort of stuff. It's cheap, but it works. I think, you know, show me a shot of Hogwarts and playing the Hedwig's theme under it. Yeah, I'm in. Like, that's, I, 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 I like that. Um, yeah. Why put the, the McGonagall in the movie? <laughs> she doesn't do anything. Uh, we took, we covered that. Oh, I like the new Hogwarts robes. The, the, oh, I the old Hogwarts robe. The new old Hogwarts robes. The, the blue ones. I think that's fun. I think that's a really nice choice to just go, well, the kids back then wore a slightly different color. It's more vibrant. I like it. I don't know why. I just do. Um, we haven't talked about this, Chris. Uh, young Newt and Young Lee to the Strange casting is fucking insane. Um, that kid playing Young Newt, not the best actor in the world, but dear lord, does he have Eddie Redmayne down. Yeah, he's very good. Very good. It's like, you know, a couple of his lines, you go, you're doing a very good Eddie Redmayne, but like your actual like believability maybe not 100% there, but like, wow. like You, you are so much this character, it's crazy. Um, so that's good casting. But even... Even then, dude, like I agree with you completely. I thought he was very good. Jess and I commented on the fact that he was good. But you know what? I was so distracted at that point by the fact that we were just randomly devoting 15 minutes to a flashback without really stating that's what we were doing. Yeah, or really doing anything with it. Like, what do we... What do we learn? Well, we learn that she, it's, teasing, it's teasing the baby thing with her. But, but, it's not showing, enough to put it together. <laughs> So no, I no 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 no. I know. I'm again. I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I'm not giving what I feel is a defense. I'm giving what I assume the defense of the All right. of the film is. Uh. Um, and we're giving. We're showing Dumbledore and Newt. We're showing young Dumbledore. He's the best teacher they've got. Dan. That's that's. We see that there. Yeah. You know, McCl- by him, said him, so. d- him doing something with a bogger that we've seen someone else do. 
Um, yeah. Yep. Arguably better because Lupin jumped into action when he was worried about what we'd see. Dumbledore seemingly is seeing what could potentially be a baby's death and isn't stepping in to stop it. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. well, kid, kids, anyway. kids at Hogwarts see weird shit all the time. <laughs> and oh, actually, th- actually, it's just a, a weird veil in the sky. At that point, it's not very clear. Um, I wrote down a piece of dialogue. I don't know who says this or when, but I wrote down this, and I, I do like this line of dialogue. Your policies of suppression and violence are pushing supporters into his arms. Um, someone obviously pointing out that the Ministry keep being all pushy and stuff. They're actually going to give Grindelwald more more supporters. Oh, on that subject, by the way, the movie can't decide whether it's Grindelwald or Grindelwald, and uh, therefore I'm not going to decide, and I'm going to change it whenever I feel like it. Yeah, I actually take that approach to every name in existence. <laughs> so I feel you. Yeah. Um, did you feel the the le- uh, mystery was compelling at all at any point in the movie? Because uh, I wrote down really. to ask you that question. Like at any point, no, were you point. like, Whoa, "What? What is this weird ribbon thing in the sky?" And no. And here's why: in the first movie, they set up Ooh, what happened between. Newton, Newton is the Le, 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 I can't say the name. Lenita. Who's sorry? The Lestra- What's that? What's the first? Oh, Lita, name? Lita, Lita Lestrange. Lita, Lita. Mm-hmm. In the first movie, they went, "Oh, what happened between Newton and Lita?" Oh, and in this movie, they went, "Oh yeah, basic love triangle." The mystery now is what's going on with Lita, and so it just completely, right? You know, the movie it just changes goalposts. Yeah. Um, I did write that I liked that Dumbledore relating to Lita over their lost loved ones was a nice scene when Dumbledore sort of mm-hmm. relates. Agree. She's lost. She lost a brother. He lost a sister. Um, I think that's nice. Um, oh yeah, we've already talked about the mirror of Erised. Uh, fucking yeah, cool. Um, oh yeah, backtracking team. This character development we've already talked about that too. Sorry, I, I'm trying to figure out this. Oh, the middle head thing is that? That's weird, right? <laughs> Newt gives a whole speech well, about how Tina uses her middle head. Do you remember I this? I remember that. He gives no, a speech. I, I... It's, it's, it's like, um, you know, oh, those auras are all idiots. And she's like, what do you mean? I'm an aura. And he's like, yeah, but you use your middle head. And she stops and is like, what the fuck are you talking about? Which is fair, because that's what I was thinking also. And he explains like, you know, you've got, you've got, you, you, you're, you're two, you've got, you've got two, most people have two heads and they do two things and then they've got the middle head. And that, like, just reason and stuff. And she's like, oh, I guess you respect that I have a mind of my own, I guess. I don't know what they're trying to do with that scene. It's weird. It didn't really add anything. It's very strange. It made Newt seem yeah, insane. I, ca- I can't even remember. I remember the lizard stuff, and that was quite cute. But, yeah, oh, the salamander stuff. That. Yeah, yeah, the eyes thing. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, oh, yeah, the, I've only seen uh, I, that in salamander scene. is weird because it accidentally charming. Um, but I still don't really know why he didn't immediately tell her that the engagement thing was just a mistake because he literally came to Paris to tell her that and then he waits two days and then when he goes to tell her they bumble around it for about five minutes before he spits out well not actually marry- marrying Leo Lestrange <laughs> just say it out right oh that was a mistake just say that straight away yeah. also why bring out the cat toy a second time why do a scene where um where Tina brings out the little cat toy and jingles it, and then the cat jumps in because we just we did that joke once. It's not different the second time. We just going. Ah, oh, remember that? Remember that joke from earlier in the movie? Because Tina and Newt are learning from each other, and she mm. she also respects and observes Newt, and and they could one day look after animals together. Cool. Um, if she if the actress didn't piss off J.K. Rowling and not have her in, <laughs> in the third film, yeah. She gets to witness the events of the third movie by watching it on TV, Chris. I shit you not. Seriously? I can't wait for you to see this third movie. It's a mess. Anyway. Um, uh, at one point, the, the Ministry are like, it's not illegal to listen. Yeah, sure. But the man speaking is a criminal, so maybe, like, arrest him? Yeah, because because you... <laughs> you At the start of the movie, he's arrested. Like, they don't release him. Like, no. they don't... Like, he's under arrest and being transported at the start of this movie. So, you could probably arrest him for the for the previous crimes. And, you know, 
all he's done since. Like, what the fuck? Like, why is he suddenly not at risk of being arrested? It's very strange. They're all just like, let's hang back. Let's see how this plays out. <laughs> it's so weird. But, but that has to happen because he's got to do his World War II visual. Which, by the way, as a visual, right? Just purely as a visual, like, taking the story stuff aside. It is a cool visual that he, like, sort of makes them go from this weird, stony, like, graveyard, like, sort of, I don't know, tomb room. Which very conveniently... By the way, I, I, next time I visit a cemetery, I'm going to be like, can I see your stage, please? And I'll be like, what? Yeah, yeah all, all graveyards have them. A big, <laughs> big room with a big stage in the middle and lots of seats. Like lots of stone bits to sit on. No, we don't have that. Really? I'm pretty sure graveyards have those. Because <laughs> I saw it in a movie. Anyway, but when he does his weird World War II visual, I, I must admit, like, even though I don't like the story implication of that, it's a cool visual, isn't it? That they're suddenly just like, he's showing them what World War II will look like. Like, they sort of, they're, they're yeah, almost in it briefly, and then it's like over their heads and stuff. I don't know, I, I thought that was pretty well done. I could be, maybe I'm crazy. Yeah, epic. No, you're right, but again, part of the problem is for you, you're watching it going, knowing that's coming, going, oh, that is a cool visual. I didn't really know it was the first time. It's right. A cool visual. You know what? Yeah, we, you, know, we, you know why you didn't notice it? The f- just before we started recording, I did say to Chris, for, for the listeners' benefit, uh, uh, I, you know, I actually came away from it the second time probably having less problems with it because, like, I kind of a bit understand more what they're trying to do now. And I think I said this last week as well. You know, the, the Queenie plot, in theory, is interesting. Having one of the characters turn to Grindelwald's side because of political reason, that's interesting as an idea. Grindelwald, you know, potentially finding the horrendous acts of man and using them as an excuse to, to, to you know, to, to turn the wizarding world in his favour and against muggles, not, not, not clever. You know, the idea of putting Nagini in one of these early movies and getting a, a the, you know, getting an introduction to her isn't a terrible idea if you give her more than five lines. There are, you know, there's a lot, there is a lot of interesting ideas in this movie. The execution's just horrendous. <laughs> that is the problem. Yeah. Just, um, just to finish my point, the, the, the I'm, the, so that's you seeing it for the second time. Yes, yeah, so no, I'm agreeing with you. This is, I'm, I'm me, supporting that point because I, I am only seeing that now, this viewing, for sure. Me seeing it for the first time, I'm going, huh, World War Two, eh? Like, I'm just yeah. letting that, yeah, like, yeah, sink yeah, in. Because yeah. yeah. the other thing about that scene we've not talked about is, and again, it just feels like backwards engineering. It just yeah. feels like not brilliant writing because that scene also has, it feels like JK went, hmm, we, want, we need to show what happens if someone goes in that and they're not on Grindelwald's side, and how horrific that is. So let's put a character in place just so that can happen, and have one or two lines of dialogue and moments with a character that is on Grindelwald's side, but seemingly not quite on his side, just so we can see that happen in the final scene. Like, that character does nothing else. They're what? completely surplus to the yes. story. And and what's what's interesting about that then is though that's the idea of that isn't just to set up the hor- the horrific nature of what happens if you go through that not really buying into Grindelwald's ideology, but it also then it does genuinely have the effect of there's a moment when Queenie steps into it that you wonder what happens to her, and then so that's mildly tense as a result of that. So it does have that benefit. And the other thing though is it raises a question, Chris. Because Grindelwald kind of shoots that fire at Lita right after she tries to stop him. Which, by the way, I don't know why she does that. She just sort of shoots shoots, shoots a wand gun at him. And I don't know why. <laughs> to prove a point, I guess. He's leaving. Like, you, you're not going to kill him. So I don't really know what the point of that is, but fine. Then he shoots the flames at her. Now, he shoots the flames at everyone, ultimately, and they all just apparate away. So why does Lita sacrifice herself? She's not buying any one time. She's not mm. taking. She's not giving. She's not dealing a blow to Grindelwald and his, and his, and his, and his, and his. You know his plans. She just fires a feeble spell at him that does nothing, and then lets him kill her. And the movie acts like she's made some brave sacrifice. What did she gain? And wh- and why can't she just apparate away like everyone else does? Mm. Nothing because she because the movie. Wants her to have a sacrifice. I don't know. Like, fine. All right, fine. Yeah, it's a bad movie. It's a bad movie. 
Yeah. Um, almost none of it works, despite there being some good ideas at its core. Um, I think I did weirdly enjoy it more this second time around. Um, but I think, you know, as Chris pointed out, the shock of the insanity of this movie was kind of over. So I, I got to sort of take it in a, in a different way. Um, so yeah, it is what it is. Um, cannot wait to do the third one. Well, let's let's quickly let's 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 blast through this truth. We got some truth. Do you want to do your thing, Chris? Do the thing. <laughs> I give it off like a vibe of like just so beaten up by this movie. <laughs> yeah. Let's do, let's do the truth. I'm sorry. I can't get over. Let's I can't find get out. Over. Let's find out which actor got privileged information from J.K. Rowling about their character that no one else knows. I, you, this is. This you know week. what's really. De- you know what's really defeated me thinking mm. about thinking about the fact that they're like it's not illegal to listen to him. When at the beginning of this movie, the character escapes from jail. <laughs> like, and if there was some, if he went to France because wizarding laws are different there, and actually he can't get arrested for a crime he committed in America, fine. But the nonsense of having a line like that in a movie that starts with this character escaping from jail. Is so it's just broken me down. The movie, the movie is Let- called Crimes of Criddle. <laughs> like, jeez, <laughs> yeah, it's bad. Let's why? Why is it called that? Oh well. Um, let's trim it up. I'm gonna give you reluctantly some trivia. <laughs> um, early rumors on who would play Albus Dumbledore included Christian Bale, Benedict Cumberbatch, and Jared Harris who, for those of you who do not know, is the son of the late Richard Harris, who played Albus Dumbledore in the first two Harry Potter movies. Now, I must admit, no interest in seeing Christian Bale or Benedict Cumberbatch do that role at all. I think those are both poor choices, being completely honest. Don't think they're bad actors. I think they're poor choices for that role. I must admit, mildly intrigued at Jared Harris. Uh, Yes, yeah, yeah, for sure. I would, uh, yeah, I'd be curious about seeing that. But hey ho, uh, Johnny Depp signed on without reading a script at all. He didn't care. He was he wanted to be part of the series. He was a fan. Um, I don't know if that means of the books or the or the movies. I assume maybe the movies because obviously maybe he watched them for his for his his buddy and pal Helena Bonham Carter. Uh, I don't know, but yeah, apparently a fan. So he just was like, yeah, I'll do it. Cool, I guess. Uh, to prepare for the role of Dumbledore, J.K. Rowling gave Jude Law extremely secret details about the character during a two and a half hour meeting between the two, during which he was allowed to ask as many questions as he needed. Uh, Law also watched Michael Gambon's performances in the previous four films uh, to help establish the character and performance, not the previous six films. <laughs> what? Did, did he do sh- six of these movies? <laughs> Surely he didn't just go, well... I'll just watch Gambon. He did it. He did it in more movies than Harris. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, but then he missed the first two Gambon ones. <laughs> oh yeah, Gambon did six movies. What the? F- I hope that's just a typo or something. Well, to be honest with you, I hope he read the books. That's the best. Oh, unless it means the four movies, like from Azkaban to when he dies, not including his appearance in Deathly Hallows. That could be the problem. Maybe it just means not the last two. Anyway, doesn't matter. None of this matters. Um, oh yeah, even though Gambon is technically in part Deathly Hallows Part Two, I suppose really he did he did Azkaban, Goblet, Phoenix, and Half Blood Prince. He did four right movies yeah, technically. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, there you go. Um, this is, movie is. The but first if, sorry, one sorry, is... no, sorry. Just to go back to that though. But if that means that Jude Law decided to just simply. Invest the time in watching the middle chunk of the movies as opposed to either investing, you know, the additional six, seven hours, whatever it would have been for the rest or reading the books. That is crazy. They're very busy people, these actors, Chris. You've got acting to do. God. He did a live stream that was 24 hours long where they like throw him in the mud for 12 hours or whatever. Yeah, exactly. He could have watched a fair few Harry Potter movies then. <laughs> yeah, secretly while that's... If anyone who doesn't get that reference, don't worry about it. <laughs> it's not even <laughs> worth explaining. <laughs> don't don't worry about it. Anyway, um, 
So I, I wrote, I put this in the trivia, and yeah, that's trivia. And now I'm thinking, why is this in the trivia? Like, this movie features the first time in the Beasts franchise, yeah, the long-running Beasts franchise, that characters, uh, sorry, actors from the Harry Potter movies reprised their roles. Jamie Campbell Bower as young Grindelwald, and Toby, uh, wrote Rebo? Oh, it's done that thing where it's underlined the name, so I can't actually tell if that's a G or a what. Yeah, Regbo, okay. Cool, Toby, Toby Regbo. Um, uh, who's young Dumbledore both appeared in Deathly Hallows Part 1 um, so two things I want to point out about this trivia first of all um, they waited one movie to do it it's not really trivia but two just the the first time in the Fantastic Beast franchise it was two movies what franchise are you talking about at this point go away <laughs> um, also they shot themselves in the foot with this Fantastic Beast subtitle thing didn't they Yes, they have all these movies did. have done Fantastic Beasts ahead of the title now. It's annoying. Yeah. Um, so it turns out, coincidentally, Callum Turner and Eddie Redmayne, who play brothers in this movie, grew up less than 100 metres away from each other. Their childhood homes were both in Chelsea, London, and were a three minute walk from each other. The two experienced many milestones in the same places, and apparently, even so much as learned to swim in the very same pool. Um, uh, Callum Turner was quoted as saying, There's something in that, an essence in the part of the world where we both grow, grew up. That uh, you think it's no coincidence that we're now playing brothers. I would posit that it is a complete coincidence that you're now playing brothers, and that those similarities are that a coincidence. Nothing yeah. more. I would it's agree. Neat, but yeah. yeah, I would agree. Don't, that's don't. that's just coincidence. Um, <laughs> like, it's just, even, yeah. the, um, even the trivia is like the movie. Here, go carry on. Yeah, no, 100%. Although Thaddeus is older than Newt, Eddie Redmayne, who plays Newt, is eight years older than Callum Turner, who plays Thaddeus. Is it Thaddeus? Whatever his name is. Thesis. Um, cool. Uh, <laughs> yeah. um, and during his first audition, Callum Turner instinctively kissed Eddie Redmayne on the top of the head, and he believes that is how he got the role. Well, a minute ago, it's because of Kismet and the, the fact you grew up in the same place, so shut up, Callum. <laughs> Yeah, but Whenever I thing, read trivia I don't like now, I'm going to be like, shut up, Callum. That's the thing they used to do in that town. <laughs> yeah. Whenever, yeah. They, whenever they say goodbye. Mm. Um, apparently when Lita opens the desk in Hogwarts to, and there's all these engravings and graffiti, apparently a similar symbol to the Mark of the Deathly Hallows can be seen there as well. Cool. cool. Um, the interior of the basement where Newt Scamander keeps beasts is stylized according to the um, sort of relativity artwork by uh, MC Escher, which is, yeah, makes sense. All the way, the weird staircase is going in different directions and stuff. But yeah, it does, works. That is, a, that is a thing that is true. Um, during the Harry Potter movies, Daniel Radcliffe went through 160 pairs of glasses. So that's good information to have. Cracking. Good brand Good brand new information for us both to have. Great. Reading that for the first time. Great triving, Dan. <laughs> So, oh, here we go. So the role of Nagini was previously offered to an Indonesian actress um, called Acha Spistra. Oh, God, I'm so sorry. Um, Septrisa? I'm so sorry if I pronounced that wrong. Um, I'm sure you're listening. <laughs> but, like, yeah, it's always awful when I can't get a name right, so I'm sorry. But J.K. Rowling, uh, J.K. Rowling had stated that the character was inspired by folklore from Indonesia. That's what I was trying to get at earlier. I was trying to say it's it's so confusing when you're referring to real world folklore. You're using the word real, like oh, it's a real thing. I don't mean real. I mean it's 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 real in the sense of real people have that in their folklore. But it's very hard to say that without making me sound like I'm trying to say that these the like, maledictus were real. It doesn't matter. But yes, it's from Indonesian folklore. So she offered it to this Indonesian actress who sadly um, was unable to perform the role in the end. Although happily, it was because of a pregnancy. So um, hey, congratulations. So yeah. Congratulations to that actress whose name I'm definitely not going to attempt to pronounce twice. Um, so yeah, someone else got it instead, which is you know it's fine. I think she does a good job. I, you know, nothing against that actress, by the way, that, that, that ultimately got Nagini. I, she, she gets five lines in the movie. She doesn't. She doesn't have a whole lot to do. So um, Jude Law used an authentic sleight of hand move that he had learned for the scene where Dumbledore presents a card to, Shem- to Scamander. Uh, whether the outcome has then been tweaked in post production or not is up for debate. But the movie itself. Uh, the move itself is easily recognisable to anyone who's dabbled in a sleight of hand trick. There you go. So, this is an interesting one, Chris. So, this is not David Yates' most successful Harry Potter movie. You'll be surprised to hear. <laughs> I'm um, shocked. But, with that said, it still did generate 
uh, sorry, 800 million in box office revenue worldwide on a wow. budget of 180. So that Jesus. is a very profitable movie. Yeah, but sure. It does sit an interesting amount under the other movies in the franchise in that so generally speaking order of the phoenix Heartblood prince and deathly hallows part one were all really consistent they all got about 950 million each mm-hmm. one of them got 940 one of them got 935 one of them got 960 you know but deathly hallows part two being the final part obviously had a big bump and got 1.3 billion mm-hmm. that's billion with a b mm. um so that's i think that's really interesting that it's like shows like a uh, a drop, but not like a. What did what did fan, what did the first one get? So that's exactly what I have here. Um, I, apparently, I do. Oh, well, huh. that was what I was just about to get to. But apparently, I have deleted the tab. One second. <laughs> that is absolutely typical. So yeah, so you'll see that that drop from the nine hundred and fifty million range to eight hundred million, which is almost exactly what Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them got. Eight hundred and fourteen million. So then, I... so, so then Grindelwald gets again eight hundred. Ah, oh, wait a second. I'm going to call BS on this because I've just done my own research and I'm getting six fifty. What for Grindelwald? Hmm. Yeah. There's a, just a, there's, a, there's an error in this trivia. So right, let me let me clarify. So all the Harry Potter movies are around 950, except for Deathly Hallows, which got about 1.3 uh, billion. Then we dropped to 800 for the first Fantastic Beasts. Then we dropped to 650 for the second Fantastic Beasts. Do you want to guess what secrets of Dumbledore made? Uh, well, based on based on that drop, about 400. <laughs> Correct. 405. Wow. God. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. (laughs) That is a steady decline, isn't it? Very steady. Um, I get it, So, apparently... I get it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. To be fair, like, yeah. I mean, you watch the first Fantastic Beasts. It's not great. I could absolutely see people not coming back after that one. You see this one. I could definitely see a huge number of people not coming back after this one. Yeah. Yeah, it's rough. Um, which, which, so. which, which is bizarre, though, because they, I guess I am a sucker for story because they just chuck so much at the wall that I am more... Even if we weren't doing this... If, if, even if we weren't doing the next one, I think I'd still be more than I was previously because this is the first time I'd seen this one. I'd be more likely to go, yeah, all right, let's watch the next one then because it's just like, I just want to see where all this madness is going. Right. Yeah. But no inclination whatsoever to see it in the cinema. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, now that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, so, last two bits of trivia. Well, three, because we've got, we got cars existed. Um, Nicolas Flamel is a historical French scribe and manuscript seller. He lived from 1340 to 1418. And after his death, he developed a reputa- reputation as an alchemist and was believed by many people to have discovered a philosopher's stone and had thereby achieved immortality after his death i just want to point that out so i guess they think he faked his death i don't know who these people are that believe that but he kind of went into legend as this famous alchemist and immortal person real person um so yeah he's kind of a uh there definitely was a nicholas flamel that existed obviously i would say it's very much up for debate whether he really was immortal considering we have his death date but um as a result he's appeared uh, in many fictional works as a legendary alchemist um and was obviously borrowed very notably by jk rowling for her harry potter series i think that's interesting trivia i wish that trivia had been in the philosopher's stone trivia but uh, at least we have one interesting piece of trivia here it's not related to this film that much but (laughs) it'll do no also, uh, thinking about it, if Nicholas Flamel can uh, predict the future, I think that would have come in handy during all the events of Philosopher's Stone, wouldn't you? Hmm. He's got a crystal ball. Yeah, maybe that. Well, presumably that crystal ball is destroyed in the intervening years, but maybe we'll see that in the maybe we'll see that in the fifth Fantastic Beast movie. But it's not getting made. <laughs> he he uses the crystal ball. 
to try and kill Nagani, and that's what turns her evil. There you go. Like, she tries to beat this. Nagini around the head with a crystal Nagini. ball. <laughs> yeah. And she's just like, fuck this. I'm off to Alabama. Yeah. I'll, I'll see you when a, when another <laughs> evil wizard comes along. I assume you mean Albania. <laughs> Alabama. No, no, she's she likes to she Voldemort likes the culture. Hiding in, hiding in Alabama. <laughs> she likes the mu- she really likes that song. <laughs> Sweet home Alabama. <laughs> and is inspired to go. Uh, that's great. Um this is an interesting one. In a post uh, release interview, Ezra Miller revealed that when David Heyman first told them they would be playing Dumbledore's brother during a press tour for Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, they initially misunderstood and thought they'd be playing Aberforth Dumbledore, uh, which led to them questioning how that would even be possible because their portrayal of Credence didn't really match up with Aberforth's character description or b- portrayal in the previous movies or books. When uh, Miller met up with JK a few weeks later and asked her about it, uh, Rowling promptly revealed Credence's actual identity as Aurelius Dumbledore. Um, so there you go. There was a slight misunderstanding and then it was corrected. Fun. Good trip. That's that trivia, except for Chris. It's time for everyone's favourite segment, our world famous segment, Cars Exist. Meow. Love it. So... Um, as with the last movie, almost all the background cars in this movie are Model T uh, Fords, um, ranging from sort of 1917 to 1927, which is the year the movie is set. Um, but like the last movie, they do slip in a couple of other ones. Apparently, I, I, I've seen the picture of this one. I don't know how anyone identified it. Apparently, it's a 1925 Renault C6 V Torpedo. Um, well, oh no, sorry, go. that one I no, that one's really clear actually. Sorry, it's the Renault is really clear. There's a Rolls Royce 20 in there. And the picture that's been put on the Internet Movie Car database for this Rolls Royce 20, I'm just like, I don't know how you figured out that was that rather than a Model T, but fine. Um, but yeah, the, the Renault, the, the, the 1925 Renault, the Torpedo, that's a really distinct car and it's very visible in shop. So yeah, that one makes more sense to me. So there you go. Cars exist. Wow. <laughs> so Dan. Do it, Chris. Where are, are we you, doing? What where are you, you putting you, it? You, you, you... I, I'm really torn because I really fucking hate 7 and 8. You do. <laughs> With you a do. real passion. I hate 7 and 8 so much, but this is such a piece of shit of a movie. I think the, the crime of laying in loads of stuff with the intention of paying it off later and writing it in a way that's like a, a, a book when it didn't need to be a book. The, the, all the problems in this are so avoidable. That it, it has to go to the bottom, doesn't it? Yeah. The word the word I was going to use is egregious. Like you know, the, yeah. the, some of the stuff in the Deathly Hallows, they're 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 splitting a book in half. Like they didn't do it well, but they're you know they're splitting a book in half. The, a lot of the a lot of the problems inherently come with that. There's not really any excuses for this, and I didn't I I didn't particularly enjoy it. I was I, for the first time in one of these movies i was bored i i wasn't bored in any of the others like you know even half blood prince i i have to put it last myself it it just doesn't yeah. function so there you go yep yeah it's it's last so with that in mind chris i don't know if you're aware of this but next week when we sit down to do secrets of dumbledore mm. our buddy is back Dumbledore? Our good friend. <laughs> our good friend Steve Cloves is back on board. Fine. Uh, genuinely, I... <laughs> someone... No, no. Seriously. Someone with more of an understanding of... <laughs> right. Is there an adult in the room? <laughs> Some, someone with more understanding of writing film and more experience writing film, writing with JK, is something I would welcome based on this movie in particular. Yeah, screenplay by J.K. Rowling and Steve Cloves, directed, Clo- of course, by Clo- David Look, I, I think the best film in the series is um, Order of the Phoenix. I definitely think that's the best script in the series. But we also really like Chamber. We like we like Azkaban. You know, some of his ideas, mm-hmm. such as his work in Azkaban, have, have been good. When he's not harboured by a love for the franchise and not wanting to cut stuff, when he's involved directly in those discussions with Rowling... I'm excited to see the results. I don't have a lot of faith do you re- based on what I've heard, but do, still. <laughs> do, do, do you reckon they forced that on JK? Like, do you think that, like, it's JK, we can't really say anything, we've just got to let her do what she's going to do? 
what like kind of went out the window and they kind of went okay we've had a, we've had we've had a, we've had an 800 million and then we've had a 600 million i think we need to maybe have a conversation now where we think about doing something different here do you think that's what happened or do you maybe, think or, jk or... requested help yeah i was gonna say or maybe she recognized it yeah because my memory my memory of the reviews at the time for this movie are akin to the the stuff we've been saying so i think you can't look at those reviews and that feedback and not go okay what can we do to address that this time mm. so i would uh, yeah i i don't know but i would you'd like to think it would be her going uh, you know what let's get some let's get some script writing help in here let's see are you, I, I mean, I'm I'm excited. You should be excited. We should all be excited. I can't wait for you to see this movie. <laughs> I've heard my friend, my friend, my friend with the child said that they, the his child dramatically preferred the third personally, and he thought the third was a better movie uh, than this. So you know, I go in, I go in fairly excited. Well, and... I mean, yeah, I guess, I guess if this is your like, <laughs> this is the low. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? If, yeah, <laughs> like it's. I don't. I, I mean, I, I. I'll tell you now. I don't. I don't. I. I don't think it's worse than this. <laughs> I'll say that. You know what I'm most excited for, Dan? Yeah. Cool runnings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For those it's who don't twice. know, after we've done the Harry Potter franchise, we're really, you know, having having just done Lord of the Rings and followed it up with all of the Harry Potter films, we can't wait to just sit down and watch Cool Runnings. I'm so for cool, an hour even and if, half. Even if Cool Runnings is awful, I'm going to give it such glowing review. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm going to be so happy about Cool Runnings. I can't wait. I'm so, I'm so <sighs> exhausted. So here we are. We've done it. And Chris, we should end on the note, the, the the really important note, which is it was very interesting to learn that Harry Potter movies across all the franchise, Daniel Radcliffe went through 160 pairs of glasses. It was. That's it the was. real but take away got, from today. Don't, don't, you know, it's not the final time we're going to hear that. So uh, I think, I think tell the people where, and I need to pee. So let's tell the people where they can find us and, and get the hell out of Dodge. Yeah, normally I'd say if you disagree with anything we've said in this podcast, feel free to find us to yell at us on the internet. Because um, often we do say, like, you know, I, I think people are going to take exception to some of the criticisms we had of the mainline films, particularly the last couple, which I know are reasonably popular. Um, but this time I'm going to say you probably agree with us, realistically, uh, the, the numbers suggest. Um, but if you'd like to share your thoughts also. Um, agreeing or disagree, you can do so in a number of places. Um, you can get us on email if you have a big old, big old spiel you want to get through. Uh, mail at nothingbutstatic.co.uk. If you've got uh, something that can be contained in a tweet, you can do it at Dan Doolan, at C Billingham with two M's, or at Nothing But Static without the G. You can also head over to the YouTube channel where there is a uh, version of this podcast uploaded with minimal visual, uh, just the, a picture. Um, the, it, it just exists as a, as a way for us to cheat the algorithm and gain new listeners. <laughs> but if you want to go there, you can leave a comment, and that gives you a lot more freedom than a, than a Twitter. Um, and then I, we, we, we try to reply to those when I can. Don't always get to. If you'd like to support us, there's a bunch of different ways that you can do that. You can, of course, keep listening. That helps. You can, of course, tell a friend. That helps. You could go over to the podcast platform of your choice and give us a like, a review, or a thumbs up, a heart, or whatever their 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 form of reviewing is. That means they share it with more people. They go, this guy liked it. Maybe this guy will like it. Then, if you'd like to even go a step further than even that in supporting us, you can head over to the Patreon, where you can go listen to our Secrets of Dumbledore podcast right now. Right now. This second. For as little as $1 a month. And on top of that, well, you know, th- th- when we get back to Korra, we're gonna, that's going to be a week early. And the rest of the Rewind Review series we're going to be doing, which will include reviews of the Santa Claus movies. Can't wait to <laughs> dive into that nonsense. Um, it's coming up soon. And you'll be able to hear those a week early on there as well if you subscribe now. So go do that if you want to support us in that way. Um, and of course, there is always the option of you didn't enjoy any of this and you don't want to support us at all. In which case, I would suggest stop listening. That would be my answer for that. But I think I've covered it all. So yeah, thanks everyone for for a bit sticking with us through this. I hope people have enjoyed sure. them. Um, we certainly haven't. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I hope you appreciate the sacrifice because <laughs> yeah. my mental health is severely, <laughs> severely damaged now. <laughs> um, but yeah, thanks everyone for listening. I'm going to hand it over to Chris because he does the outro. I've been Chris Billingham. I've been Dan Doolan. And this review from the Wizarding World has been rewound.
just two more of these. No, just shit, this was two. Just one more time. I've got to be pissed off about that stupid Wizarding World thing. And actually, this time, Chris, I get to be extra pissed off about it because they fucking stuck it in the logo at the beginning. Yeah, got its own little fucking logo. I was like, oh, this is the first time they're really sort of putting that into films. But you just know, like, it wouldn't surprise me if... Um... You know, if those films get re-released on Blu-ray or... It wouldn't even surprise me. I don't think... I've not heard this, but it wouldn't even surprise me if that logo's been strapped onto the others in the in the uh, streaming releases. Yeah, probably. Ugh. Fucking hate it. I hate yeah. it. I hate I it all. It's really I bad. Know. I know, Dan. One more. One more. Just, just one more. Bye! Just one more. Bye.